and little baby Rachel are watching the game back in Dallas. We've asked Dan Jiggets to step in. Danny, this Philadelphia team has been a real study in contrast. They look all world in defeating the Giants on Monday night, and then they look just awful last week against Cleveland. Well, Vern, that's a real sign of a young team. You have a great Monday night game, and then you can't come back and concentrate the next week. But i tell you something. This team and the Dallas Cowboys, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cowboys, don't like each other very much, and that's evident when you talk to the players. The Cowboys, the last time they were 2-5, and five, I had just gotten out of college. <laughs> Dan Jiggets was in the fifth grade. And as Michael Irvin, the Cowboy wide receiver, told us last night, he was just a thought. <laughs> well, you know, when you think of Dallas, you always think about the crown jewel of the NFL. But they have had their problems this year. The team is up for sale and all the rest of those changes. But they can change things around this today if they do two things. Get the ball into Herschel Walker's hands early and get Steve Pelot to put some points on the board, not just deliver numbers. Overcast skies, 56 degrees. It's a terrific football temperature. Winds out of the southwest at 10 to 15. Humidity, 58%. It was clear this morning. It had rained the last couple of days. The forecast called for clear skies, but then the clouds rolled in about an hour and a half ago. Luis Zendejas, once a cowboy at the beginning of the year, will kick off as Dallas has won the toss. Kelvin Martin, three yards in, and will return it. Gets a good block right side and is out to the 29-yard line. Tackle made by Byron Evans, a return of 32 yards. And Steve Pallor knocked out on the third play a week ago against the Chicago Bears. He is back in. And defensively for the Philadelphia Eagles, Reggie White, seven and a half sacks. Mike Pitts, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons. That is the strength of the Eagles. The linebackers, Seth Joyner, Reichenbach, and Todd Bell. And the defensive secondary, Roy Nell Young, the rookie, Eric Allen, Wes Hopkins, and Andre Waters. First down from the 29. Kelvin Martin starts, goes wide to the left. Newsom comes all the way over to the right side and lines up outside Ray Alexander. Now they shift again. Blitz threatened by the Eagles. That's Thornton Chandler in motion. All of that to give Herschel Walker the ball for a gain of one. <laughs> Well, you know the thing that the Cowboys are trying to do is get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with those linebackers and Herschel, but uh, you've got to be a little bit more effective than that. Offensively for the Cowboys, it's Pelour at quarterback, Herschel Walker, Timmy Newsom, Ray Alexander, and Kelvin Martin start. They have had major injuries at the wide receiver spot. The offensive line, the wide bodies, Dave Wydell, Day and Nate Newton, Tom Rafferty, the 13-year veteran, Crawford Kerr, Kevin Gogan, who gets Reggie White today, and Thornton Chandler. Second and nine, Dallas. Again, a three wide receiver set. Motion again, four man rush, play fake, and the pass to Kelvin Martin. Open on a slant pattern, first down Dallas, tackled by Wes Hopkins. A gain of 16 out to the 45. Now what you're trying to do if you're Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys is you're trying to isolate your receivers on those defensive backs with the motion. And that's why they're using it because they understand that this Philadelphia defense fairly complicated. When you put that motion into the thing, it's like a wild card in the defense. Throws everybody off in that secondary. you got to stay with your guy all the way across the field. Calvin Martin has been a major revelation for the Cowboys this year. Third round draft choice of a year ago playing with a broken wrist. So he has a cast in his left hand. He goes wide to the left on first down 10 from the 45. Newsom, the motion man. The handoff, Walker going left, gets to the outside, gets a little bit of a shield block, and then mostly on his own, gets inside the 45, and Eric Allen made the tackle. And you do not want your cornerbacks making tackles on Herschel Walker. That's not the best way to play defense. But again, that time the Philadelphia defense settled down, you didn't see them moving with the movement. What they said is, hey, look, let's make it simple for ourselves. That's what Dallas wants you to do. Settle down in there. Don't try to play that man-to-man. -man. Just play some zones. That's a gain of nine, second down and one. The Cowboys have been criticized for not using Walker enough early in games recently, particularly the last two. Here's a play fake. Valor settles for the short man, Timmy Newsom. And he's down the sidelines and out of bounds with another Cowboy first down at the 34-yard line. Wes Hopkins again with the tackle. Timmy Newsom was a little upset. He felt he got a late shot there as, as he ran along the sideline. Here we can get another look at it. Steve Pelour pulls out, drops back, and rolls to his right. Now he's going to find Timmy out there in the flat. He's wide open because the linebacker you saw was dropping off. Now Timmy does what he does best, gets along that sideline and gets those extra yards, squeezes him out, and that's what he was upset about. He felt that he got that late shot there on the sideline by Seth Joyner. Impressive early drive for the Cowboys. 23 catches coming in for Newsom. First down, 10. 
at the 34. And as much as anything, the Cowboys would love to get this crowd out of the game early. Play fake, blitz, pass left. Bobbled and then caught by Newsom. And he is inside the 30 and down at the 27. Tackle made by Andre Waters. A lot of play fakes early on on first downs, Dan. Yeah, well, you know, everybody's thinking, hey, look, they're going to put the ball in Herschel's hands. So what do the Cowboys do? They come out and put it in everybody else's hands as well as Herschel. So you, you mix up your pass distribution as well as your run and let the defense start thinking, gee, they're not going to just go to Herschel. Who else are they going to use now in this offense? So you have to play everybody all over the field. You cannot just lock in on Herschel Walker. Second down and three. Opening drive of the ball game, no score, an impressive start for the Cowboys, Walker left. Terrific block from Timmy Newsom, and a first down for Dallas inside the 25 at the 23. Todd Bell, a former teammate of Dan Jiggets with the Chicago Bears, makes the tackle. Yeah, he calls himself the little linebacker out there, but he can't be too little when you tackle number 34. He's a load and a half to bring down at about 225 pounds, but Todd Bell is about 225 too, and he played safety at that weight now buddy ryan brought him in and said hey look can you play linebacker for me he says sure no problem that means i can gain 10 more pounds right <laughs> he does play on the passing downs primarily and then dwayne giles will come in for bell on short yardage situations first down dallas cosby is in the tight end doug bothered by an achilles tendon now the cowboys shifting again say alexander wide to the right five seconds on the 45 second clock left timeout they could not beat the clock with all that motion and the play late getting in. Well, Vern, that, that's something you notice if you look at the Cowboys' offense, that they do not give themselves a lot of time when they come up to the line of scrimmage in order to do those the, the motion that they like to do. But we'll have more about that when we come back in a moment. This has been a most impressive Dallas Cowboy drive to open the ball game. They have a first down and 10 at the 22. The Eagles have had problems in the first quarter of the last five games. They've been outscored 46-0. Philadelphia got 21 in the first quarter against Tampa, 14 in the first quarter of the second game against Cincinnati, and they have not crossed the goal line in the first quarter since then. Dallas has had problems scoring in any quarter all year. Averaging 16 points a game. Blitz is threatened on first down and 10. Double tight end set. Martin in motion, play fake, and flags before the snap. Now, this is not... Now, there's the first little altercation that's broken out. Well, you know, Kevin Gogan took a, a little grief off of Reggie White last year, and he said he's, you know, he's been in the, the league now for a year, and he's not ready to take it anymore. And now here we see Reggie White moving inside right over Gogan, and he gets him right up in the chest, tries to push off a little bit there, and now you see Kevin tying up on him pretty good. Hey, oh, okay, Kevin's uh -huh. getting them back for last year, huh? That's against the Cowboys. In the in the, the game that caused so much controversy, the first game after the strike last year, Kevin Gogan got his first start for the Cowboys. He was up against Reggie White. On the first play of that game, according to Gogan, <laughs> White came across and put both hands with fingers extended inside his face mask and said, welcome to the league. Thought he was an optometrist, huh? <laughs> First and 15 after the five-yard penalty. That'll be a fascinating matchup throughout the afternoon. Split backs behind Steve Pallor. A two-step drop. Goes left side. Man open. Caught. They picked up five. Eric Allen makes the catch. For the tackle on Ray Alexander. Now, you know the problem, though, with that penalty that Kevin just got is the fact that when you're down in that plus territory, you're down near that 20-yard line, you don't want penalties like that pushing you back. Now they gain five yards on the play, but now it's second down and 10. And that's when you take young tackles and you say, hey, look, just settle down. That stuff doesn't help us at all up there. Gogan replaced Phil Paz Derrick, who decided to retire after the strike. Gogan was also one of those who had to sit out a 30-day suspension earlier this year because of the violation of the drug abuse policy. Back in as the starter, and he's one of the wide bodies, 300 pounders up there. Second and 10 Dallas. No score. Kelvin Martin starts in motion. Play fake. Flag on the far side of the field before the snap. That was Dave Waddell who pushed off just a little early at the left tackle position. Ball start. Offense. Number seven. Dave Waddell, the opposite tackle, and that has been a problem spot for the Cowboys. Mark Tuanay, who was the starter, is out for the season knee surgery. 
Daryl Smith, who started in replacement games at that spot a year ago, has two broken ribs. Waddell is a fourth-round draft choice of Boston College. Hey, you know, the, the thing about him, though, he's a tough kid, you know, and, and Tom Landry said in, in the newspaper articles that he didn't expect him to play as well as he has coming in as a rookie. But uh, the guy's been playing pretty well. I saw him last week against Richard Dent, and uh, he did pretty good against him. Second and 15. Again, no score. 11.28 to go. First quarter. Ballure, man wide open, Ray Alexander. He's down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Mike Reichenbach makes the tackle, and Wes Hopkins was in the area. Hopkins, a, a wonderful story, out with major knee surgery in September of 86. He was out for two full years before he was able to rehabilitate himself and come back and start this year. Wes Hopkins is one of those guys that dedicates himself to playing football as well as taking care of the rest of his life. And I think that when you see players do that and come back after a two-year absence, you know that that's the kind of person they have to be because it just doesn't happen naturally. Cowboys 45% on third downs. They've got a third down and six right now. Reggie White lined up in the center over Tom Rafferty. He'll be there quite often. Blitz is coming. Pelora reads it, and he's got the ball delivered to Alexander. Still fighting for the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. They came in waves at Steve Pelora. And this man, who has been so maligned for his problems inside the 20, Found Alexander is the hot receiver. Now, the key, though, is Steve Pallor sees the pressure coming up front. He just coolly sets up and fires it to Alexander downfield. Now, watch Ray Alexander. This is really presence of mind, taking that ball, taking it back into the end zone. Desire. You want the score, so you take it in, even regardless of who's on you. Terry Hogue is the man who missed the tackle. Now, Roger Ruzek for the extra point. Ruzek, from a field goal perspective, has been in a horrible slump. Pallor will hold, low snap. Kick is up. It's good. The Cowboys with an impressive start. They go 71 yards, overcome a couple of penalties, and get the touchdown to Alexander. Ray Alexander's third touchdown catch of 1988 gives the Cowboys a 7-0 lead, 10-25 to go first quarter. And uh, a very impressive drive of nine plays, four minutes and 35 seconds, and they overcame two penalties en route. And the key, too, is that they get the ball in a lot of people's hands, but still they got it to Herschel in the effective mode of running outside. And that's what they really wanted to do. And then they featured the receivers down later on. Roger Ruzek will kick off. Sean Beals is the deep man. He's a rookie out of Idaho State. Ruzek involved in a bitter contract dispute with the Cowboys and held out of camp. And at the start of the season, Luis Zendejas, who is now the Eagle kicker, was kicking for the Cowboys, and a decision made at the second, uh, after the second week to keep Ruzek, let Zendejas go, and in the wonderful, wacky world of <laughs> field goal kickers, there they are in the same field again. And Ruzek's four and ten, and, uh, and uh, Zendejas has hit five in a row. <laughs> yes, and it has made the newspapers in Dallas. It has not gone unnoticed. <laughs> here's, here's Ruzek's kick, short one. Squib kick, Konechny, drops it, picks it up. Mark Konechny has it. And he gets it back as far as the 20-yard line. One of the fascinating aspects of the NFL. There's Mark Konechny, who was back with Sean Beals. What are the odds of a kid from Idaho State joining a kid from Alma College on the field of Veterans Field? Here's Randall Cunningham. Sacked nine times a week ago, but brilliant in the Monday night win over the Giants. And against him, the Cowboys will deploy Ed Tutal Jones, Kevin Brooks, a hobble Danny Noonan, Jeff Coates. Ron Burton, Lockhart, and Cobb, the former Eagle, and the secondary has Everson Walls, Williams, Michael Downs, and Bill Bates. First and ten from the 20. Chris Carter starts in motion, and Cunningham will throw on first down. Left side, Greg Garrity has it. Robert Williams with the tackle. They immediately attack the left cornerback spot. That's been a weak spot for the Cowboys. There's Garrity. He's joined in the offensive set by Randall Cunningham, Keith Byers, and Andrew Anthony Tony, along with Chris Carter, <clears throat> Michael Quick, of course, on injured reserve. Up front, Matt Darwin, David Alexander, Dave Remington, Singletary, who might give way to recently signed Ron Solt today, Ron Heller at right tackle, and the rookie sensation Keith Jackson out of Oklahoma. First and ten, Philadelphia. Cunningham has been sacked 34 times this year, tops in the league. Draw play. 
They give it to Anthony Tony, and that uh, didn't fool anybody. No gain. Jim Jeffcoat with the tackle. And uh, Keith Jackson came over in motion and gave a real weak stock block there at the point of attack. He's a great receiver, but I think, you know, you think a guy coming out of Oklahoma, he knows how to throw a block or two, but he really didn't get up and pop the defender like you'd like to see. Elsewhere around the league, you see other scores. Jimmy Giles comes in as the second tight end now, the uh, much-traveled veteran, having played with Houston, Tampa Bay, Detroit, and now Philadelphia. Two wide receivers set to the left side on second and 11. Another draw play. Right side, Keith Byers is dropped. Kevin Brooks, this time, who had a terrific game last week against Chicago. Well, you know what they were trying to do is run a little fake bootleg there. Now, what they're setting up is uh, Randall Cunningham rolling out, faking that bootleg. You keep faking it, and sooner or later, you're going to come out there, and he's going to actually have the ball and throw down field. That time, Keith Byers ran into a little traffic over on his offensive right side. Third and 11, Byers is out. Ron Johnson just signed. After Mike Quick went down, comes into the lineup. Three wide receivers set. And Cunningham, no shotgun on third and 11. Audible, Cowboys threaten the blitz. Williams backs off the dog, and Cunningham's back pumps once and goes deep, and it's, oh! Should have been intercepted. Bill Bates had it right in his midst. Right in his midst. You know, Billy found himself playing center field on his own, and he saw the ball, and all he saw was green in front of him, and he just simply dropped it. He took his eye off it right at the last second. Watch him look up field, and now he's going to look downfield, and he's going to say, hey, look, I can make it to the end zone, and that's when that thing slips out of his hands. The other thing to remember, too, is that the field is a little damp, and what it does is it makes that ball really slick, and when something happens like that where it goes over your shoulder pad, it'll, it'll pop out on you. Galvin Martin, who's averaging 9.4 yards per return, to return John Kelchick's kick that's way up in the air. And Martin Swift has to let it go. And it's going to be down at the one yard line. Touchback. His feet were in the end zone. A middle error by the Eagles. Watch what happened to Kelvin Martin. Well, first take a look in the end zone. Now, what happens here is that as a defender, when you're running down, you have to stop the ball with your feet inside the, the field of play, not in the end zone. And there you see the defender's feet are inside the end zone, and as a result, it's a touchback. That was Scott Curtis. The Cowboys get the ball at the 20-yard line. Now they're checking the replay. play was reviewed by the replay official Jack Fetty. He found Scott Curtis to be in the end zone, so it is a touchback Dallas. The longest punt of John Telchi's career, 70 yards. Well, you know, though, if you're going down to cover that punt, you're Scott Curtis. If you see the official between you and the ball, the official is a part of the field, so if he's blocking you from the ball, you simply run over him and go to the football. That's a great chance to get an official, too. <laughs> ball does come out to the 22nd Dallas possession. 7.45 to go first quarter. Palua, right side, Kelvin Martin. They're throwing much more on first down than they have been early in the year. Well, you know the thing that Tom Landry is always real big on is changing trends. He doesn't want to establish anything where people can get a lock on him. So now he's starting to go to guys like Kelvin Martin, Ray Alexander, getting the ball around in a lot of people's hands. So everybody can't say, as we said earlier, they're just going to use Herschel, Herschel right, Herschel left, Herschel on the pass. That's not going to be the case today with the Cowboys. But the key is they will go to him when they need a first down. They've got a second down and short right now. Walker thus far with three carries for 15 yards. Hasn't caught a pass yet. Second and short at the 30. Just shy of the 30. Officially it's the 29. Now Palour calmly motions Newsom over. They've got four seconds left and they have to use their second timeout because they can't beat the 45 second clock. Well, they... The, the Cowboys always talked about how much motion they wanted to use and how they wanted to confuse the Philadelphia defense. Now, the problem that you run into, though, is you drain that clock because not only does it take you a year and a day to get the play in from the sideline, but then when you do all of your motion and if you ever have to try to audible off because of a blitz, you're really in trouble. And now they've burned two timeouts because of that. Much made this week about the rivalry, the fact that Buddy... Ryan did fake the uh, touchdown last, or the, the knee down last year, and then have Randall Cunningham throw it into the end zone. Ryan said, hey, it was revenge. What goes around comes around. 
Well, you know, a lot of speculation, Dan, about how much effect that would have once the game started. What do you think? I think that all drains off. That's nice pre-game stuff. But once you get into the game, you've got to concentrate on your job. And you can't be thinking about, gee, you remember that knee down last year? If you do that, you'll end up going home sad again. So I think what the Cowboys really have to do is settle down and get into their game. It was interesting, the contrast, however. There's America's has been one of the signs here. Uh, you, you hear a lot about locker room. Of course, well, there was a billboard in the Philadelphia locker room with 14 articles, <laughs> many of which had been printed in Dallas. In the Dallas locker room, at least as of Thursday, the only thing on the bulletin board was a ticket request list for this game. <laughs> and Tom Rafferty had asked for 40 tickets. Mm. Second down and short. Dallas leads it 7 0. Here's Herschel Walker searching right side. Another great block from Newsom. Boy, Timmy Newsom really leveled the linebacker. Well, Timmy Newsom is kind of an unselfish player, but you know what happens sometimes along that defensive line? Things change a little bit. You get some good blocking up front, and Reggie White is one of those guys that got blocked a little bit. Now, he likes to move around. Here we got him on the isolation, and Kevin Gogan gets some help from the tight end Chandler. They're double-teaming him, and they got him up in the face and everything else. But, hey, you know, occasionally you're on the offensive line, you, your hands slip up on the pads a little bit. Now, are you talking from experience? <laughs> Absolutely. Strictly accidental, <laughs> right? That's right. Never meant to do it, coach. Never saw a Harvard man with a straight arm. <laughs> First and 10, Dallas, 7 0, they lead. Herschel goes left. Gets another block from Newsom on Clyde Simmons. And then there is the price you pay as a defensive back trying to make the tackle. Did you see Wes Hopkins bounce off him? Yeah, that's the thing that Herschel does. He'll punish you when you try to tackle him, particularly if it's up top. He's going to punish you if you're the tackler. Now, watch here as Wes Hopkins, number 48, comes into the screen. He hits Herschel high, and he takes the beating, not Herschel. Herschel goes over. He can get a glass of Gatorade now. What's the key, though, Dan, tackling down low? That's the key. you got to go down and maybe at his shin, not necessarily at his ankles because he has great balance. But you hit the shins, that's when he's going to go down. But And don't hit those knees because that will <laughs> knock you out. Second down and three, 6.47 to go. First quarter, Dallas up 7-0. Ball at the 40. Play fake, Pelour. Good protection, now he'll run. And he's close for the first down. Visions of a week ago with Mike Singletary dancing through a lot of folks' heads. Yeah, but Steve took a look at the clock and said, yeah, I'm past 90 seconds, it's okay to go. <laughs> he didn't want to look like Michael Spinks again and go out in 91 seconds. But uh, that play, you saw what he did, though. He rolled and protected himself and covered himself up as soon as he hit the turf. Young quarterbacks get smart after they get stuck a couple of times. Coaches know that, hey, the guy's going to have to get hit a couple of times, and then he starts to realize that we're telling him the truth. Get down to the ground and protect yourself. These may be the best two running quarterbacks in the NFL on the same field today, Cunningham and Pelour. Double tight end set. It's third and about a foot. Cosby, Folsom, they got three tight ends in now. Steve Folsom has joined them. Cosby is the man in motion. Herschel Walker. And he did not get it. Doug Bartlett made the tackle. There is a flag down. The Cowboys are reacting as if it's against the Eagles. Well, what happens a lot of times in the short yardage plays is that down along that defensive line, they'll move over into the uh, neutral zone. Well, the Houston Indians, defense, number 96, aims to the face, ball run penalty, first down. Isn't that something? They get, they get Clyde Simmons. They didn't see Kevin Gogan. Well, you know, that happens a, a couple of times if you're starting to make a little noise on defense. See, the key is, if you're going to do something like that, don't talk. Just do it. It's like Clint Eastwood said in that movie. Don't, you know, if you're going to shoot, shoot, don't talk. And that's what happens there. Now, what happens, though, is the next play out, the offense will try to get him back very very secretly. That's the way offensive linemen work. They kind of just want to, you know, work at you, and then they'll get you back. First and ten, all kinds of shifting by the Cowboys. Alexander goes wide left. Newsom and Kelvin Martin are wide to the right. And off on the draw. Walker nailed. Reggie White. Flag down in the defensive backfield, and it might be against the Eagles. And Ray Alexander is all in. I believe that's Wes Hopkins' face talking a little bit of that trash that, you know, it's going to get started here again now. Dick Hantak is the referee today. There is Reggie White. I think uh, almost by unanimous consent, the best defensive lineman in the league right now. Yeah, he's playing as well as anybody I've ever seen play the position of defensive end and defensive tackle. 
Now they've not moved the ball from where Walker was stopped. Andre Waters arguing his case. Waters has a reputation, whether deserved or not, of being a player who's right on the edge. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, Buddy Ryan likes a tough guy, but he likes a smart guy in the secondary. Now, what he did by getting caught is not smart. Uh, now, if you can do what you've got to do without getting caught, then he'll live with that. But when you get that 15-yarder or the 10-yarder or whatever it might be, he does not appreciate that because suddenly you're moving from around the 50-yard line down to uh, the 42, and that's a big difference when you move into the positive area of the field. And especially after the outstanding play by Reggie White that had stopped Walker exactly. for the loss. And instead, it's a first down 10, Dallas 5.18 to go. This first quarter has been dominated by the Cowboys. Three plays in the punt for the Eagles. Play fake for Pelour. Screen pass. Left side, Herschel Walker. Now he's got some room. And a first down inside the 30 at the 28. Eric Allen had to make the tackle. And you saw where Eric Allen hit Herschel Walker down on those shins because that's the only place where he's, he's vulnerable because he's human down there. I think the rest of him is made by a computer. <laughs> this guy, you know, I, I talked about him last week, and I said that the kind of human being he is, you really like him. He's a guy that he said he was programmed to win, and that's something that you like to hear out of an individual. The guy doesn't allow, you know, the other normal hurdles in life to really stop him. That's the kind of person he is. He says, hey, look, I can accomplish whatever I want to if I believe I can do it. See the other scores rolling by, some uh, surprises early on. Our score is 7-0 Dallas, an 18-yard touchdown toss. Ballure to Alexander. And for the third time in the first quarter, the Cowboys have to use a timeout. They are zip. They're out of timeouts for the rest of the half. Only three seconds remained on the 30-second clock. Now, what Steve Fuller is doing is he's coming up, and Philadelphia is shifting that defense around. He wants to make his call, and then he says, gee, maybe I can audible here. But by the time he looks up and sees that 30-second clock, hey, it's too late. The only thing you can do is call a timeout. That's Al LeVan looking on with Tom Landry as Pelour pleads his case and tries to tell him what's wrong. Five oh four remaining in the first quarter of play. The Cowboys dominating but leading by only seven. And they have used their third time out. At last time, Dan, it appeared that it was strictly uh, one of the offensive players going the wrong way. Well, what can happen sometimes is the offense is so confusing when you hear all of those calls made. It, you know, sometimes you go to the wrong side, and that time Kelvin Martin went to the wrong side of the formation, so Steve Floor signaling him to go back over the other side, drain the clock on him. First and ten. Martin starts in motion, followed by Eric Allen. Floor back, goes deep. That's uh, simply a bad throw. That was a wounded duck. And now another fight is broken out. Well, any thoughts that the uh, hostility between these two teams might have evaporated with a kickoff has been uh, negated. Well, you know what happens sometimes in the game is somebody gets it started again. Somebody says something on the field. Sometimes we're not privy to all of those little conversations, and that's what starts the atrocities. And again, today it's been very evident. This time it was Jerome Brown and Crawford Kerr who got into it. There's Brown, number 99. Now, Buddy Ryan set uh, Jerome Brown down a couple of weeks ago because of fighting on the field. He said, hey, look, you're supposed to be playing out there, not fighting. You can't help me if he kicked out of a game. Now he's back out of the game. Here's Dick Hantak. He's going to straighten this out for us. This may be a case of offsetting fouls. Let's see. Ryan's going to, uh, the Eagles are going to call timeout. Defense. Unnecessary roughness. It was Brown of the Eagles, Crawford Kerr. And this is a 40-second timeout as the explanation is being given to the Cowboy bench. Well, you know, I don't really see where there's any explanation needed. Both guys are out there going at it, and they just really called it a plague on both houses and said, okay, guys, reset it and cut this stuff out. Now, there you see them right down at the bottom of your screen. They've got some face masks going. Now, it's obvious that Jerome Brown's face mask has been pulled off already because his head, his helmet has been pulled off uh, by Crawford Kern. They're really going at it down there. They don't like each other too much, but this is what's going to make an interesting matchup up front. So if you want to see what mano a mano is all about, we'll keep an eye on that pit today. Herschel Walker's got a smile. First down and 10, and we're back to play. That is the first Eagle timeout. Herschel says all that to do is run. <laughs> now the crowd gets back into it. This all started in Buddy Ryan and the Eagles' sense 
when uh, Tom Landry used Dorsett, Ed Jones, Randy White, a couple of others who, who crossed the picket line in the first game a year ago. The Cowboys won that 41-22. Ryan had no veterans in the lineup. And then, of course, Ryan went for the touchdown with two seconds left and admitted that he was trying to run up the score on Tom Landry. Interesting, they went for a fake punt against Tampa Bay earlier this, this year, and he was asked if he was trying to run up the score. Ryan said, I only do that against Landry. <laughs> Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass and the two flags. Ballure with time. Left side, double coverage. Caught. Out of bounds at the one-yard line, Ray Alexander, the former Canadian League All-Star. A 26-yard gain from Ballure. Now, the thing that Ray Alexander does here on the left side of your screen is watch him slip down in between two defenders, and this ball is perfectly thrown by Pallor. Now, watch the ball slip right down in between two defenders, and Ray Alexander, concentration on the play, concentrates on the ball rather than the defender, and he makes the play and almost gets in for the touch. Cowboys first and goal. Won an interesting stat. Herschel Walker has rushed for 665 yards. He has one rushing touchdown this year. They've not used him much inside the tent. They don't this time either. Newsom touchdown. Flag is down. And it's back at the five-yard line. Now you see uh, Nate Newton is down there trying to do a dance, but the officials are trying to get the ball away from him. Don't celebrate yet, big guy. There's a use of the hands on the defense. Hands to the face. That hands to the face penalty seems to be the, the one of choice today. Uh, seems like everybody is trying to check and see if everybody else had a shave today or something. But you know what? That can be a dangerous thing, though, all, you know, in all seriousness, when you take that face mask and jam it up because you can jam a guy's neck back, and that's when it's not funny, uh, when something serious happens to someone and they get injured. The Cowboys come in 2-5. and five. Roger Ruzek trying to give them a 14-0 lead. They have averaged just under 17 points per game. And they're on a verge of 14 in their first two possessions in Veterans Stadium. That's a 71-yard drive capped by an 80-yard drive. 18 plays for the Cowboy offense thus far. Only four for Philadelphia. Well, we've got an interesting game here, and next week, great doubleheader action for you on CBS. Many of you will see Chicago against New England. Next game, next to a week, the Cowboys are at home against Phoenix, an important Western Division encounter between the Rams and New Orleans. Others will see Atlanta here in Philadelphia, while others of you watch Green Bay against Buffalo. And then the second half of the doubleheader, most of you will watch Minnesota out in Candlestick against the San Francisco 49ers, while others will watch the Giants against Detroit. That's a 4 o'clock start. It all begins with the NFL today, live at 12.30 Eastern Time. See the fella in the back? That's Mike Quick. And the guy down in front is another offensive tackle, Stan Walters. I like to mention those offensive linemen. They'll give them a little play. They need it. <laughs> Mike is doing analysis on the Philadelphia radio broadcast. The young fella in the middle is Merrill Reese, the play-by-play -play man, and then Stan Walters to the left. Mike hasn't earned the front row seat yet. <laughs> Got the Bob Euchre seat in the broadcast booth. Yeah. It's been an all-cowboy first quarter. 4.49 to go. 14 nothing. Sean Beals to return the kick. And connecting is the short man of 15. tackle bounces off another here's another flag and it comes flying at the 25 yard line the tackle is made by robert williams and it's going to be against philadelphia you know buddy ryan was telling us the other day that um, they're one of the least penalized teams in the league and everyone says they're a bunch of thugs and, and all of that uh, well they certainly have been collecting penalties today i know they're they oh. have I know they haven't been collecting them in the past, but uh, they certainly have been today, and it's really been affecting both of them both offensively and defensively, and that's something that you know Ryan is going to say, hey, look, that's got to stop, absolutely. That cost them field position back inside the 15. The penalty was on Jimmy Giles. 
Randall Cunningham, brilliant in the win over New York, sacked nine times last week. The Philadelphia offense, which twice this year has been over 400 yards, was held to 119 against the Browns. And the way you slip into that kind of a groove is by not having your offense on the field, much like has happened to them today. That, that offense of the Philadelphia Eagles really has not been on the field very much. They can't get things clicking if they're sitting on the bench. Cincinnati rolling over Houston. And Atlanta with an early lead over New York. First down, 10. Eagles have one first down thus far. That's Keith Jackson in motion. Cunningham looks left. He's in trouble, in the grass, and that'll be the first sack of the day. And Cunningham, I think, with some justification, is going to argue about the in-the-grass rule because, it, Dan, it takes away the athletic ability of the quarterback. That was a terrible call because Jim Jeffco came by and just barely brushed him, and then Danny Noonan came in. But, hey, look. Well, now watch the play. Here now, first 77. Jeffco gets in and gets he beats it, his man on the inside. Noonan grabs him, slips off. Now with a great athlete back there, quarterback, you got to allow him to do his thing. You cannot restrict the game down to the point where it is no longer interesting to watch because you're trying to protect one player. The key words, according to the rules, are grasp and control. And I would argue that Danny Noonan did not have control. He may have had grasp. Second down and 18. Myers lined up wide to the right. They throw it out to Keith Jackson. And Ron Burton makes the tackle on the rookie tight end out of Oklahoma. There's Burton, who's had a troubled season this year. He was a splash last year as a free agent, but uh, has had some problems in the second season. And he's got Mike Hegman back now on the field to help him out a little bit. Hegman's the veteran back there. They call him the flex master. He understands that flex defense. And I'm sure he's taking Ron Burton under his wing and saying, hey, look, this is how you do this thing. And he's settling the guy down so he doesn't make those rookie and first and second year mistakes. Cowboys go into the prevent defense. Third down. Three wide receiver set. Third and 12. 14 nothing. Dallas leads it. Cunningham looks left. Ed Jones has him. Cunningham. There he's out of the grass. Pumps once and then gets nailed. That will count as a sack. Down at the 10 yard line. Kevin Brooks got up with him. But you saw an example of the kind of thing that Cunningham is capable of. Now, what, the, what, the one thing that happened, though, is Jim Jeffcoat read the screenplay all the way. He didn't get cut by the tackle. So what he does is he gets up, and he's in Randall's face. Randall can't unload the football, so now he starts scrambling, and he's in big trouble. He just looks for an out. John Kelchick for the second time, a career long of 70 yards the first time out. Kelvin Martin waits near midfield. Another fine punt by Kelchick. This time, Martin will grab it at the 39. Down at the 44. And another one breaks out. This time, Everett Gay and David Little. That's about the seventh flag we've had in the first quarter. And it was after Martin had been down. 50-yard punt, five on the return. You know, the thing that the Dallas guys are doing is playing it very smart. They're walking away from the fight. They'll start a little something, then get away real quick. And the official sees that shot that's thrown on the second turn. And what he's doing is he's catching the Philadelphia Eagles in most of the um, action. Well, from the way the Cowboys were reacting, this is going to be against David Little, number 89. And see, they're, they're kind of joking about it and say, oh, yeah, you got him again. Kelvin Edwards uh, giving a little high five to Everett Gay. <laughs> Here's Dick Hampack. If you're going to try to get back at somebody, you got to do it in a clean way. I mean, if you get a good clean shot on a guy, you take the clean shot. But when you start going to that face mask, going to the neck, all of that stuff, that doesn't make any sense because the officials can see it, number one. I mean, if you're going to try to get a shot on somebody, you just work in there and wait until the opportunity presents itself during the game. And then, you know, that's what football is about, all about hitting people, but not doing stuff like grabbing face masks. And again, the Cowboys get the ball with the... Uh field position at the 42. They've had to drive 71 and 80 yards for their two touchdowns. It's a 14-0 game that has been dominated by Dallas. First down 10. Newsom starts in motion. Herschel Walker goes left. Searches has some room. Foot race with Jerome Brown. And Wes Hopkins and Brown catch up with him. Herschel Walker's previous longest run this year had been 26 yards. That is a 29-yard effort for Walker. 
And the one thing that he got was a great block out of Crawford Kerr at the point of attack. He pulled out and just great, made a nice block here on the linebacker. Now watch Kerr, 68 from the backside. Gogan gets out and gets a backside block as well, but Kerr, 68 right there. Key block, now Herschel sprung into the secondary, and he does the rest because it's very difficult to catch a guy who's a world-class sprinter, particularly when he's got a little lead on you. But Jerome Brown doesn't do a bad job of chasing him down on the sideline. That block by Kerr on Andre Waters. This one doesn't work. And the second man in puts a hat on it. And what you saw Todd Bell, number 52, doing was trying to strip the ball out of there. That's something that Buddy Ryan taught him from the first day he came to the Chicago Bears is go after that ball and get the turnover. And here's an isolation of Herschel. He's trying to head off that left side, and now there's nothing, there's nowhere to go up there. Todd Bell meets him at the point of attack, wrestles him down. Now watch Todd reach in and try to get him down to the ground. He didn't try to reach him for that ball. He's just wrestling him down, trying to, it looked like a steer wrestling contest out there. That's a loss. Second down and 12. Cowboys lead 14-0. Rushing yard is 52 to minus 2. Philadelphia defense was confused at the snap. Diving catch made by Herschel Walker inside the 10 at the 9. He played that one smart as well. He knew that he could roll it towards the end zone without even getting up. And until he's touched and he's down, he's still making positive yardage. And here we see it on the replay. Floor finds Herschel right over the middle there. Now, he makes a nice diving catch. And now, watch him just keep rolling towards the end zone, understanding that until he's touched, he's live. You try to get up in that situation, though. That's when they, they find your, your head rolling over towards the sideline. So he played it very smart. Cowboys have had problems inside the 10 this year. This will be the 25th play they have run inside the 10. They have not used Walker as much as you think they should, perhaps. 52% of the time, either as a receiver or a running back. This is a three-wide receiver set on third and six. Palora back, rolls out, Timmy Newsom at the 10, far short of the first down. Now, call on Roger Ruzek. Mike Pitts made the tackle. Well, when Herschel ran to the corner of the end zone, he had a lot of help over there with him in the, in the names of a couple of the defensive backs from the Eagles. They were not going to let him get out in that end zone by himself. So and then Steve Floyd just said, hey, look, I'll dump it, off, dump it off to Timmy Newsom and allow him to try to get some yardage on the play. But Herschel was double and triple team down there in the end zone. That'll bring on Roger Ruzek, who has been in a prolonged slump since signing a new contract. He's 4 of 10 for the year. Now, earlier this week, he hit 24 of 25 in practice on Thursday. And the one miss was from 51 yards out. This will be a 27-yard field goal effort. It's good. And the Dallas Cowboys have equaled their per-game scoring average in the first 14 and a half minutes of this ball game. They're up 17-0 on drives of 71, 80 and 42 yards. Well, you think back to how they got there, too. Penalties on the part of the Eagles. Penalties that don't help you in terms of, you know, grabbing face masks and all that. Keep going back to that point because it changes field position and also changes what you have to do offensively. You no longer have to struggle to get the first down because it's given to you as a result of that penalty. Now, what that does is it puts a lot of pressure on your defense because you're suddenly backed up against the wall, even if you, you start out with good field position. And then, you, you know, you get down by 17 points and your offense hasn't even been on the field uh, to break a sweat, really. And now you're down 17 points. Uh, Jeff Fisher, who played defensive back for him with the Chicago Bears out of USC. We first came into the Bears, we nicknamed him Guppy, because he was a little fish. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, what uh, a lot of speculation about the, the locker room orations this week. Kevin Gogan told us last night that Tom Landry told the team on Friday, well, if we win, I might even shake Buddy Ryan's hand. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I can't see it either. Roger Ruzek will kick off. Beals is back, connecting the short man, and the ball falls off the tee. You know what always makes me kind of smile to see these kickers? You know, they wear one white shoe and one black shoe. Well, the reason why is one's a soccer shoe and the other one's a nerd, natural turf shoe. But, you know, you always say, hey, look, why don't you get two white shoes? They said that when you change it to the, to the white shoe, it, it changes the way that the, uh, the, the shoe feels on the ball. I don't believe that. I, I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Beals at the five. Right side. Good return by Sean Beals, the rookie from Idaho State, all the way out to the 30-yard line. 
That'll do it from Veteran Stadium for quarter number one. The Cowboys on a roll, 17 zip. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. GMAC, the official sponsor of America's dreams. And by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Back for quarter number two from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. Vern Lundquist along with Dan Jiggetts. The Cowboys with a one-yard touchdown run from Timmy Newsom. A touchdown catch of 18 for Laura to Ray Alexander and a field goal from Roger Ruzak. And the Eagles have now been outscored 63 to nothing in the first quarter of their last six games. Every stat is overwhelmingly in favor of Dallas. There's one of them. Ten minutes to almost five minutes. First and ten Eagles at the 31. Quick count. Anthony Tony for a couple. And that'll be a second down and eight. And that gets the Eagles back to even yards. Zero yards rushing now. Now, if, you, if you're a Philadelphia Eagle fan, you start saying, hey, look, what do they have to do to get back in the game? Well, the one thing you want to do is establish some kind of a run game and be effective with it, and that gives Randall Cunningham an opportunity to look downfield. There's a penalty, a flag that was uh, slipped onto the ground, and it's against the Cowboys, and I quite frankly didn't hear what it was. It's a five-yard call. Offside, Dallas, is the call. So it'll be first down and five. That was one of those sneaky ones. The guy must have just dropped it out of his pocket. Yeah, no, it, it really didn't hit the field. Just slipped it in there a little bit. <laughs> First and five, Eagles down 17 nothing. Cunningham, two of three. He's been sacked twice. Play fake. Cunningham rolls out. Great job by Noonan of shadowing him. And then Cunningham has to throw it away. That was a terrific job of containment dive by Danny Noonan. But what you got is the two inside guys really forced to play. Now, Randall's back in the backfield faking, but he's the only person he's faking is himself because he doesn't look around and see those defenders standing right, you know, right behind him. So suddenly he has to pull out and there's nobody left there. Now, you see all those down blocks coming and that's when Noonan beats everybody inside and now Tutal's got the pressure from the backside. Randall's just scrambling, trying to set up and throw the ball downfield. Second down and five. 17 nothing. Dallas leads it. Another play fake, and Cunningham with time across the middle. Caught. Great catch. Keith Jackson. His second of the game, and the Eagles are across midfield for the first time. Bill Bates with the tackle. Keith Jackson is one of those guys that came into the league and looked like he'd been playing in the National Football League for about 10 years. Randall Cunningham finds him coming across on a crossing pattern there. Now watch Keith just reach out and kind of make that nice play. But see, Billy Bates is right on his tail. Though. That's the thing that will happen with Dallas. You'll be able to complete those kinds of passes, but you won't get that extra yardage on the run after you make the reception. That's 44 catches for the year for the rookie from Oklahoma who caught 13 his senior season at OU. <laughs> First down and 10. First time Philadelphia's been across midfield. And Cunningham with an audible at the line. 45 second clock down to two. He gets the snap off. Good protection. Deep left side. Man wide open. Overthrown. Oh, he had him. Ron Johnson just signed after Michael Quick went on the injured reserve list. And see, that's the difference between an experienced receiver who is also quick. Uh, and that play, he's able to run underneath of the football. Ron Johnson couldn't do it that, on that, that opportunity. Now, what you do sometimes is you come back and your quarterback says, hey, look, i got to gauge it down a little bit. You're not quite as, as fast as Mike Quick. And again, uh, Dan, they go at that left. There's Mike Quick. Again, he's going to be out for at least five more weeks. And he was telling us the other day, he says it just kills him to sit there and watch things happen. And he says, hey, I can make a difference. But he can't because he's got one leg uh, just gotten out of the pass. Second down and ten. Again, the change by Cunningham. Cowboys adjust their defense. Cunningham goes left side. He fires, bounces off the tackle. And then the Cowboys do show some aggressiveness. Interesting, Ernie Scott, the defensive coordinator, said last night in a conversation that, that this young Dallas defense had played so well with such emotion through five games. And the last two games, they were just flat as could be, and they need to get aggressive today. Yeah, and the Redskins game the other day, they didn't come out pumped up like he likes to see him. And then, of course, against, uh, against the uh, Bears, they, they did the same kind of thing, kind of went into a shell early in the game. Bears got up on them, and then they really were just trying to protect themselves. Now, the thing that Ernie Starter says is, hey, look, I want you guys to get after them tomorrow. And that's what the Cowboys have been doing defensively. Third and five. Shotgun. 
Colquitt. Cunningham, left side, intercepted. Picked off by the Cowboys, and here they come. This is Ron Francis. Inside the 30 and out of bounds with a flag down at the 27-yard line. Ron Francis, the number two draft choice a year ago, who came off injured reserve and lost his starting spot because he was so rusty the last two games. A 32-yard return. The play will stand. The penalty after the reception. Now, what happens in that situation is you get a little pumped up now because, you know, you've been having a tough time, but suddenly... But now, you, now suddenly you get pumped back up again. The penalty, I believe, was on Everson Walls on the return. Uh, now, now you start getting that emotion working for you again as a defensive back. Here's a play again. Now watch on the right side of your screen because that's where Ron Francis is going to be. He makes a nice pick right off of the receiver's back end. Now watch him reach over and just grab the football right there. 38 gets a good block by Billy Bates. Now he does his job and Ron Francis does the rest. Now watch uh, Everson Walls came down and apparently pushed one of the offensive men in the back and that's what the penalty is all about. Ball at the 42. That is only the fifth interception for the Cowboys this year. Here's Herschel Walker going right. And he cuts it up inside the 40, down to the 38. Reggie White makes the tackle. Turnovers have been a problem for Dallas. They came in tied for dead last in the league. They were minus nine in turnovers. And what that usually tells you is your defense is not playing as aggressively as you would like to see. But certainly today, they've turned it up a notch defensively with that Dallas has. And the contrast is Philadelphia. They were plus 10 in turnovers coming in. That's only the sixth interception that Randall Cunningham has thrown this year. It was like Ernie Starner was telling us last night. He said, hey, look, sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. You know, somebody will fumble the ball and you just don't get it. Second down and five. Backs in the eye this time. They fake it to Walker. Fleur settles for an alternate receiver and drills the ball to Cosby. First down at the 25 into triple coverage. The former pro bowler who was bothered by an Achilles tendon and made some noise earlier this week about maybe wanting to end his career somewhere else. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, he loves playing in Dallas, and, then, you know, sometimes they're just doing that. They say those kinds of things that get the coach's attention a little bit. Coach knows how to get theirs, and sometimes the players know how to get it back. Matter of fact, Thornton Chandler started the game, played one play, and went to the bench, and Cosby has been in since. And uh, I don't know whether there was an injury to Chandler, but we'll try and find out. First down average, 7.1 for the Cowboys. They lead it 17 nothing. Ball 25. Walker left. Mike hits up on top with the initial contact. Now, as you watch that Dallas offensive line when they do that shift, when Mike Ditka first came to the Bears, the one thing he asked us to do was that Dallas shift. Did he? Now, we looked like an accordion when we were trying to do it. <laughs> but what Dallas does with it is uh, a lot of times you see those linemen stand up. Now, what that does is it, it, the defense can't read what they're doing in, 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 in the backfield. And in that split second, you cause some doubt, and then you go back down to snap the football. But that's one of the reasons why the offensive line will, will do that stand-up routine. I'll tell you something interesting. They did away with the shift for a year, and then they brought it back. There's the shift that Dan's talking about. Second down and seven. Cosby in motion. Four-man rush. Right side, Kelvin Martin almost is beheaded. And he's out of bounds uh, short of the first down. It'll be third and two. Roy L. Young made the tackle. We're coming to you this afternoon from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Cowboys have assumed command. They lead it by 17-0 with 10-17 to go first half. And they have a third and two at the 17. Dallas has scored thus far on an 18-yard pass to Ray Alexander, a one-yard run by Tim Newsom, and a 26-yard field goal, Roger Ruzek. The Eagles have been across midfield just once and then had a pass interception by Ron Francis. Third and two. Newsom, the motion man. Bootleg by Pelour. Did not get the first down. They'll have to call Ruzak out again. This is Clyde Simmons who stayed home. And that looked like designed run all the way, a run or pass. Well, I tell you what, though, when Ru when uh, Blue turned back around, he's like, my, my goodness, you know, what's happening here? Because there are two or three defenders in his face. So sometimes you wonder whether or not it was by design or by mistake that it happened because it looked like Herschel Walker wanted that football coming back across the, the formation. Roger Ruzak hit his first field goal, 26 yard out. That makes him 5 of 11 for the year. This will be from 34 yards officially. 
Ballure will hold on fourth and one. High snap. But the kick is up and it's true, and Ruzek might be breaking out of his slump. He's two for two. That's from 34 yards away. The Cowboys turn a Ron Francis interception into three points. 9.26 to go first half. Cowboys have had the ball four times. They have scored four times. Two touchdowns, two field goals. Clyde Simmons with an alert play on third and two. Not allowing Timmy Newsom out of the backfield and then coming in to contain Steve Ballure to force the field goal. And that indeed was a bootleg. You're exactly right. And Steve Ballure couldn't dump it off to Timmy, so he says, hey, i got to run it. And Clyde pulls off and makes the stop. Roger Ruzek, two field goals. Sean Beals back to return yet one more kickoff. One thing you never want to do is leave the league in kickoff returns. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a bad sign. You don't want to see that happen. Here's Beals. At the five with a running start. Looked like a track man. He looked like Roger Kingdom as he came flying out. <laughs> hurdled the 10, hurdled the 15, hurdled the 20, and stumbled into a hurdle at the 25. You know, a hurdle in the form of Ron Burton. Randall Cunningham comes back on. Things have not gone well for the Eagle offense. Buddy Ryan joins the crowd in urging them on. Well, they have barely, the Eagles offense has barely had an opportunity to be on the field. You saw earlier in the graphic that we had that they've only had the ball about five minutes out of the game. Now, that's difficult for a young team to get on track when you only have it that amount of time and no sustained drives. Right guard, Ron Solt is in. He trips on the first play he makes. And Byers is wrapped up and knocked down. Ron Solt, who had a protracted contract dispute with the Philadelphia Eagles before finally agreeing to a trade from Indianapolis. And he has practiced twice in the last eight months. Yeah, how would you like to do that? You come in, you sign a big contract, and then your first play, you're trying to pull out and lead the player around your, your right side, and you just simply trip. <laughs> and then your running back, Keith Byers, is going, hey, big guy, come on. <laughs> you got the million-dollar deal. Yeah. Second down and eight. Cunningham in the shotgun. Sun comes out. And Cunningham has to hurry. Darts out of problems, and then he's in the grass. That's the third sack. And Danny Noonan gets it. Well, one of the things you want to see a quarterback do, though, is if he's gonna if he's gonna run, sometimes step up in the pocket because you can buy yourself a little bit more time, and then if you're absolutely forced to, then you run. Sometimes Randall gets up in there and he just wants to take off right now. You just got to settle up in there a little bit, give yourself some time, and then go. Three sacks for the Cowboy defense, which came in with 22 sacks for the year. And what they're doing is they're running games up front, and that's why if you step up in that pocket, sometimes there's nobody else left there to tackle you unless you, uh, you, you try to take off. Shovel pass, Anthony Tony, And that'll be short of the first down, out to the 30. Gary Cobb, the former Eagle, made the tackle number 59. Gary Cobb, whose wife and family still lives in Philadelphia, got to see them for the first time in a month or so last night. <laughs> Interesting young man. He was the ninth-round draft choice originally of the Dallas Cowboys back in the 70s out of Southern Cal, then played for Detroit for years. And he was a man of the year here in the Philadelphia area in 87 guy who gives a lot back to the community. John Telchik, an other excellent punt. Kelvin Martin at the 25. Martin tries to dance outside. Watch out. Oh, boy, what a pop. A fine return. Scott Curtis clotheslined him. Number 91, a 45-yard punt, a 16-yard return. Thus far, that man, John Telchik, out of the University of Texas, has been the most potent weapon the Eagles have posed. His punting has uh, given them some help. And then after the punt, what happens? You say these kids aren't aren't athletes? Yeah, Billy Owens comes down and, and watch him check his oil here a little bit. Now, the one thing that you don't like is, again, Billy Owens went to the helmet there. And it's easy to pick on those punters. Wait until one of those linemen runs down there, though. First down and 10 and for the Cowboys. Michael Irvin and Kelvin Edwards are in at wide receiver spot. Herschel Walker breaks through, and once he does, can be oh so dangerous. And he's down at the 50-yard line. Well, let's bring you up to date on what's happened so far in the ballgame. As the Cowboys lead it by 20 nothing. Time of possession, Dallas with a four-minute edge. Valor is 13 of 14 for 139 and a touchdown, and the total offense, 200 yards to 22. Now, the thing is, Steve Valor is not only posting good numbers, but the other thing, as we talked about earlier, is he's putting them up on the board as well. And Dallas has had problems scoring this year. 
Walker searches left, doesn't find anything. Manages to get maybe a half a yard. Mike Golick has come in and placed at Jerome Brown now, number 90, and he made the tackle. And what the Dallas uh, offensive line is trying to do is they're doing that zone blocking again up front. Now, what that means is you are moving to an area with Philadelphia's defensive line slants fine. You're in position to pick them up. But that's the thing that they're trying to do, block zones, clear out an area for your running back to run in. Third and two. Minnesota leading Tampa Bay. Some other upsets in progress. Philadelphia was favored in this one. Third and two. Horrible pass for the 15th time. Nice throw. And he's now 14 of 15. That's another first down for the Cowboys. Thornton Chandler made the catch. What Steve Fleur is doing now is he's using all phases of his passing game, throwing short with a with touch on the on the ball. Now, because he's been known as a guy who wants to throw downfield deep, he's now developing that touch passing game that Danny White does so effectively for the Cowboys. On first downs, the Cowboys have now accumulated 13 and the Eagles two. First and 10 at the 45. Cosby, Martin, and Alexander come into the lineup now. Cosby goes tight to the right side. Five and a half to go before halftime. 20 nothing Dallas. Play fake, Ballure back. Up in the pocket, sack, first time. Mike Reichenbach. Who got his starting spot back about three weeks ago from Byron Evans. Now, one of the things that the Philadelphia defense will do is they'll keep blitz. And if you are if you are Reichenbach here, number 55, and your guy does not come out in the pass pattern, you come in on the blitz. Now, watch Reichenbach slide around outside after the game. You saw his running back stay in, and he says, hey, look, I'm going to go in and make this, this sack because what happens is Giles was coming from outside, and he just accompanied him on the blitz. That is only the sixth time this year that Steve Pallor has been sacked. Six times for Pelour, 11 for the Cowboys. Five last week in the first half with Danny White playing. And Walker is tripped up by Mike Golick behind the line. And it'll be third and long for the first time. The other thing that Buddy Ryan likes to do defensively is he'll have those defensive tackles inside, key on the offensive guards, and as soon as they read pull, and they'll look at your stamps a lot too, just to make sure, and as soon as they read pull, they'll just fire straight across the line of scrimmage and get into your backfield and upset what you're trying to do. Third and 16, officially. The average prior to this play has been 3.2 for Dallas. And they've got a mile to go now, out of the shotgun. Four wide receiver set, and a delayed blitz. The Lord goes deep in the zone coverage for Alexander, and it's incomplete. Eric Allen was right with him, and Terry Hogan come back to help. That was excellent play by Eric Allen, too, because you saw he got his hands on the football. He looks like the receiver on the play, and the key to it in not getting an interference call is he is looking back at the football. Now, watch number 21. He's now at the left bottom of your screen, Eric Allen. Now, he just stays with Alexander stride for stride, turns inside and looks for the football, and he's got the great position, and there he makes the play. Mike Saxon is on the punt for the first time. He's averaging 41 yards per kick for the year. Mark Konechny is back, and that's not a great punt. And Konechny, though, is uh, stumbling and has to dive forward to make the catch, so it is inside the 20. Mike Saxon has in his contract a $10,000 bonus every time he leads the league and punts down inside the 20. He picked up 10 grand a year ago. three in the first half left in this one. Buddy Ryan looks on. His team trailing by 20 nothing. They have zero yards rushing, 32 passing thus far. And Cunningham opens up in the shotgun. A four wide receiver set. A four man rush for Dallas. Cunningham drills it. And it's deflected. The flag is down. Pass interference. Should be the call on Robert Williams. Williams and Ron Francis, teammates at Baylor University, Williams got the starting spot Pass when Francis defense. was injured. Defense, number 23, first down. Now, the whole key here on the left side of your screen to watch now is the delivery of the blow. Now, if it's it, just before that ball gets there, you see that Robert is actually draped over, and that's what causes the flag to come out. First down, Philadelphia. Got to get some separation before the ball gets there, and then you can deliver. Cunningham, left side behind Byers, and he had some pressure. 
Kevin Brooks was right in the face of Randall Cunningham. College football next Saturday on CBS Sports. The Penn State Nittany Lions travel to Morgantown, West Virginia to take on one of this season's major surprise teams, the undefeated West Virginia Mountaineers. It's a battle of traditional powers in the East next Saturday on CBS. Second down and 10, Cunningham left side, caught. That's a first down at the 41-yard line. Ron Johnson makes the grab. His first since rejoining the Eagles. Johnson, a 30-year-old who's a four-year NFL veteran. Put back on the active roster after Mike Quick went out with the injured reserve, uh, to the injured reserve. First down and 10, Eagles. Shotgun again. 325 to go before halftime, and this one is deflected. There's a flag on the far side of the field. And what happened is uh, Philadelphia did not set up. They, they went with a, like a two-minute offense type thing. And as a result, they didn't have time to set up. That'll cost them five. What you're trying to do here is really Philadelphia offense is get things moving, get, get people excited again. And sometimes when you do that, you say, hey, look, we're going to go without the huddle. But the result is some of you guys don't get into that two-minute phase. Down. Down. That'll make it first and 15. Again, Ron Solt, number 65, is in at right guard, replacing Reggie Singletary. He's matched up against Kevin Brooks. Cunningham, 6 of 11 for 60 yards. And again, no blitz by the Cowboys. Cunningham across the middle. Keith Jackson with a stiff arm. And a first down at the 31. A gain of 33. And you know Randall Cunningham loves to go to this big tight end that he's got. Now the guy reminds you a lot of Kellen Winslow. Watch Cunningham. He finds him right across the middle. Now the key here is he does not go down when Everson Walsh tries to make the tackle. He does that little Heisman move there on Michael Downs. And now watch him punish some people on the sideline when he goes out. But 33 yards on the pass. That's what this young guy does for you offensively. Three for 54 in this game, 45 for the year, and the deepest Philadelphia penetration of the afternoon. Stunts by the Cowboy defense, Cunningham across the middle again. At the 23, it's Keith Jackson, tackled by Michael Downs, the free safety. And the first signs of life by the Eagle offense this afternoon. And if they can get something in, what a momentum builder that would be before halftime. That's right, because they know they're going to have to hear from Buddy at halftime, and you want to put something on the board. Cunningham flushed. Here's where he can kill you. First down, Eagles. Randall averages 7.9 yards every time he runs the ball. And the key there is he got a nice turn back block from Anthony Tony, who turned around on Jim Jeffcoat and really put it right up in his chest. So the, you know, his, his receivers downfield are turning around and recognizing the fact that he has that running ability and throwing blocks for him downfield. In the last three games, only eight carries for 89 yards and a touchdown. That time he picks up a first down at the 14-yard line. 20-0. Cowboys lead. Cunningham wants it quiet. off to Anthony Tony, and Ron Burton comes over the top as Ron Francis and Danny Noonan get low in front of him, and they stop him after a gain of two or three. And Randall came back to the huddle and said, hey, thanks, buddy. You threw that block one. I'm going to hand it off to you. Just to give you a little action down here on the goal line. At least one more play before the two-minute warning. Second down and eight. Second and seven. Cunningham in the end zone. Tipped and complete. Everson Walls might have gotten a hand on it. Everson Walls had the blanket of protection on, on Keith Jackson that time. He did get a hand on it, tipped it back over his shoulder. But the thing was that that play, I think that Randall Cunningham tried to force the ball into to Keith Jackson. It just wasn't there. The play was not there to be made. That brings up a third and seven. Philadelphia zero of four on third down conversions thus far. And they have the ball at the 11-yard line. 
Garrity goes left side, so does Byers. Tony stays in the backfield, and Carter and Jackson are both wide right. 37. No blitz for the Cowboys. Cunningham, the ball is tipped and caught. Touchdown. Keith Byers. Zendejas on to try and make it a 13-point deficit with 2.07 to go in the half. On third and four, Byers with the deflected pass. Got it. And that woke this Philly crowd up a little bit. Keith Byers there in 11-yard TD reception. But great concentration on the play because as he was running across the end zone, the ball was indeed tipped, and he kept his eye on it. Now watch, right in the middle of your screen, Cunningham pulls out. Now he finds Byers, but watch that ball's tipped right there by Gary Cobb. He tips it up. Now watch Byers concentrate on the ball. Even with a defender in front of him, he still makes the catch and rolls into the end zone for the score. That's Byers' second pass-receiving touchdown of the year. There he's saying thank you. <laughs> I like that a little better than a spike. Mm -hmm. Coming up at halftime, Brad Irv and Dick Buckus with all the scores and highlights. And Leslie Vizzer visited with uh, Dan's old teammate Walter Payton this week and found even without football, he's still a man in motion. That's all coming up two minutes and seven seconds from right now. Well, you know, Walter's racing cars now, and, and now he's racing them legally, I should say. He's on the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, following in the path of Dan Pastorino. That's right. He likes to live it on the edge. You know, he, he's the guy who loved speed when he was running the football, and now he can drive and get on the track and enjoy himself. That's got to give a huge lift to the Eagles now. Excellent drive featuring the catches of Keith Jackson until they got to the 11-yard line, and then Keith Byers gets the deflected pass. And Philadelphia within 13, 20-7. Zendejas with the kick. Cornell Burbage comes left and is knocked out of bounds near the 26-yard line. And that'll do it prior to the two-minute warning. A 19-yard return by Cornell Burbage. Steve Ballard comes back on the field with the Cowboys leading 20-7. 158 to go before halftime. A most impressive Philadelphia drive. 83 yards in nine plays after having done absolutely nothing in the first uh, 17 minutes of the first half. That has got to be just a terrifically impressive drive and, and, and important drive for the Eagles. Well, it's a real uplift for the Eagles. Now the key is for Dallas not, don't make a mistake in the two-minute portion of this quarter. Go in with your heads up high when you go into the locker room. But for the Philadelphia Eagles, they have incurred the wrath of Buddy Ryan, and at halftime, it's not going to be a lot of fun in that locker room. I know I've been there with them a couple of times, and I can tell you, it won't be printable. This may be a case where we don't want to have the microphones in the locker room at halftime. Cowboys have the ball at the 30, and Fleur is back to throw. They don't have any timeouts left, remember that. And here is Newsom, who does not get out of bounds. And he does have a first down at the 45. The Cowboys used all three of their timeouts, fighting the clock in the first quarter. As we said earlier, the thing that they don't want to do here is make a mistake by throwing an interception and take that advantage away from them and that up feeling that they've got going into the locker room at halftime. Steve Pallor is 14 of 16, 15 of 17 in the first half. No timeouts left. Everett Gay in, four wide receiver set. Screen pass left. Walker nailed. Seth Joyner, number 59, makes the tackle. Seth Joyner is one of those guys, Buddy Ryan says, as soon as he really locks into this defense, he's going to be in the Pro Bowl. Now Philadelphia calls timeout. They do have two left after this one. Timeout. Nope, they've got one left. There's I beg your pardon. Timeout. Now with a minute eight remaining. Forty-second timeout. 40 timeout, as you heard. But now with a minute remaining, everybody says, well, gee, why did they call a timeout? Well, they figure if they can stop 
uh, Dallas on this drive. They get the ball back maybe with about 50 seconds left on the clock, and they're able to go back in and maybe try to get a field goal out of this thing. That makes his second down call for uh, Tom Landry and the Dallas Cowboys all that important because if they do have to yield the, the ball, they fall in danger of having the lead trimmed. And it's a Cowboy effort that may be the best of the year. Mm -hmm. They played with great enthusiasm, the Cowboys did, in the first five games of the year. Lost in the Monday night game to New Orleans and then looked absolutely flat in back-to-back -back games against the Redskins and the Bears. Well, the one thing you know about a Dallas team is it's well coached. Tom Landry is not going to let his players slip too far uh, from where they're supposed to be. And the thing that he always does is switch things up a little bit from week to week. And that changes, you know, the look that that defense will get. Second and ten, Dallas with... 108 to go in the half. Eagles have one timeout left. The Cowboys are out of it. Five-man rush. Ball batted down as Kelvin Martin slipped. And then Roynell Young got there to knock it away. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a beautiful play by Roynell, though. He just kind of reached over and slapped the ball down and understood his spacing. See, that's the thing. When you get a young, a defensive back, he understands the spacing, and that's what Roynell does, and he reaches over without getting the penalty. Give you an idea of how young this Philadelphia team, Roynell Young and Ron Baker, who was inactive today, the offensive lineman, are the only two players remaining from the Super Bowl team of 1980. Third and ten. Lord, deep left side, man, wide open. Alexander needs to get out of bounds and does not. So the clock keeps running. First down, Dallas at the 35, 21-yard gain. But Ray Alexander could not get out of bounds. But the key thing is he made the reception. Now, you see Tom Landry arguing the point. He said he rolled out of bounds, but that's not the way it was ruled. Now, Pelour downs the football. And a flag is thrown by Dick Hantak. Laura is going to argue the case. I... Now, what that will be is delay of game if indeed. Offense. He threw it. Number 64, the pass hit the center in the foot. Yep. Lost it down. Second down. That's the first time Tom Rafferty's been in a position to catch a pass in a 13-year career. <laughs> but the, the, the real conflict here, that was an inadvertent throw at Rafferty's feet, comes here with Alexander. Did he or did he not get out of bounds? Now, Landry said he did. Right side of your screen. Now, the key is here. He can still be rolling even though if he's not touched. He can roll his way to that sideline. Now, he tries to get up here, but there you see he is touched just before he gets to that sideline. You can see the white stripe going down the side, and he didn't make it. Ballour, left side again. Alexander, and again, he does not get out of bounds. That's good for the first down. What he's got to do as a receiver is come back to the football, catch the football, and then make his move out of bounds. That's why he's sliding down to the turf. Come back to the ball. Now let's see if he can avoid Rafferty. No, he's going to throw it right side, and it's incomplete. Better it was not caught. Yeah, exactly. Kelvin Martin, the intended receiver. Now, the quarterback is allowed to throw that ball right down at the line, lineman's feet, but you cannot hit him because that means he's a receiver. And I'm sure that when Rafferty looks at the, you know, the stats after the game, he says, hey, at least give you a chance to catch it and run with it. <laughs> Landry looks a little agitated. Yep. That, for him, is an expression of extreme anger. <laughs> Second down and ten. They are within field goal range of Ruzek. With 19 seconds to go. No timeouts left. Blitz coming by the Eagles. Ballora across the middle. No timeouts. The ball is down at the 13, and the clock shows 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7. And Philly can take their time getting back over across the line of scrimmage now. Did he get it before the clock expired? I don't think he did. He did not because his right guard, Crawford Kerr, had not gotten back and gotten set. The thing that happens a lot of times in that situation is the guy saying, what's it on? Never mind what it's on. Just line up and get down. Now, here's the setup. You see Crawford Kerr coming back from up the field. He tries to settle in, and it's just too late. Steve Floor bounces that ball off just as that last second ticks off the clock. So an impressive late first-half drive 
Comes up empty. The Cowboys got to the 12 with no timeouts, but they don't get another score. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota. There's quality. Who could ask for anything more? Northwest Airlines, serving more than 220 cities in 20 countries on three continents. And by Budweiser, Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Halftime at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia with the Dallas Cowboys leading by 13, 20 to 7. A Dallas team that came in 2 and 5 and in danger of falling to 2 and 6 for the first time in 25 years. However, they got Dan out to that 20 to nothing lead and then what the, I think was a very significant drive toward the end of the half by the Eagles. Well, Randall Cunningham woke up, he got some protection up front, that was the key for him, and he really started taking advantage of some opportunities in that Dallas defense. Now, the thing that happened at the end of that, uh, at the end of the half, where Steve Pelour couldn't quite get that ball off in time to get set up for the Roger Ruzek field goal, may come back to haunt Dallas later on in this ball game when you think that that was quite possibly could have been an additional three points that really could have set up, set up the difference coming down late in the ball game. This won't shock you. The statistical edge goes to the Cowboys at halftime. They have 17 first downs to seven. Total passing yards, almost a 100-yard edge there. Total yardage, more than a 100-yard edge. And time of possession, 18.46 for Dallas. 11 minutes and 14 seconds. The one eagle drive, 83 yards in nine plays, made it 20 to seven. And then, as Dan said, the Cowboys had a chance for at least a field goal, but they had used their three timeouts in the first quarter, had to try and negotiate the length of the field with no timeouts, and came up a second short. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by UPS. We deliver to every address in the U.S. and to 41 countries worldwide. Duracell, the copper top battery, it now lasts 30% longer. And by Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? Sellout crowd in Philadelphia. This, by the way, as an ironic footnote to this game, is the eighth straight sellout crowd the Cowboys have played before, but seven of them have been on the road. They can't sell out at home anymore. Well, it's kind of like being the homecoming game for the, uh, you know, the home team. Yeah. I don't like to see that. Roger Ruzek will kick off as Philadelphia returns the kick to open the third quarter. 20 to 7, Dallas. Taken by Sean Beals at the two, again with a running start. Gets by Todd Fowler and is chased and dragged down from behind by who else but Bill Bates who uh, even now is the leading special teams tackler for the Cowboys. That means Randall Cunningham comes on. Randall with a so-so first half, for much of the first half. Look at the quarterback comparison. Pelour, 19 of 25 for nearly 200 yards in the touchdown. Cunningham, 9 of 15 for 112. One touchdown, one interception. And that's a direct reflection, of course, of the time of possession. But the quarterbacks have been spreading that football around pretty well, too. And particularly when you look at Dallas and you think about all the hands that the ball's been in for them. They hand it off on the trap play inside and Keith Byers is out to the 20. Now where has that ball been going? The two quarterbacks, where have they been throwing it? Well, Roy L. Young has uh, been thrown at five times, Eric Allen eight. They've completed seven of eight at Eric Allen, one deflected, and he's made three tackles. Well, the key, though, with Eric Allen is the thing that they've been, the passes that they've been completing on them are those underneath passes, so he's not really getting beat deep. And, you know, that's a tough spot. If they throw that five- or six-yard pass, chances are they're going to complete it on them. Anthony Tony out of the backfield, second down and six Eagles. Ball at their own 20. Cunningham on a half roll, pulls up, and is not in the grass. No whistle from Dick Hantak. And the play gets yardage to the 21-yard line, Keith Byers. Interesting, the contrast between the whistle that was blown in the first half and then Hantak's reluctance to whistle at this time. There is a man down for the Cowboys. We'll try to get a number for him and a name as soon as we can see who it is down there. I can't tell yet. Don Cochran and Kenny Locker, the Cowboy trainers, are out. Well, they've had their shares of injuries this year. And they'll afford another one. Time has been called while they check on the injured cowboy, and we'll get an identification. But first, we'll take this time out. 
The injured player is defensive tackle Kevin Brooks, former number one draft choice. He is on the bench being uh, tended to right now. And Randy White, who is playing in his 201st game for the Cowboys today, has taken his place. Randy now in a backup role as he winds down a brilliant career. Third down and five Eagles out of the shotgun. Delayed four-man rush, pass right side, caught by Carter. First down for 31. Manny Hendricks in the nickel made the tackle. But Chris Carter caught the pass for the first down. And the one thing that you want to see Chris Carter do a little bit more of is when he, he turns around and he does that stop, you'd like to see him work back towards Randall because what that does is it forces the ball back to him and separates him from the defensive back. That time he just kind of stopped and waited for the ball to get there. Now what will happen is at some point or another you'll see Manny Hendricks reaching over and slapping that ball away. First and ten Eagles. They trail 20 to 7 opening moments of the second half. Cunningham will throw it again. Right side. Keith Jackson bobbles it, grabs it, out of bounds. Nice gain to the 42. Gene Lockhart makes the tackle. Now, the one thing that's happening up front for the Philadelphia offensive line is suddenly these guys are snapping those arms out. Now, watch him get separation on those defensive linemen. You see those arms being extended, and that's what causes this play to be successful downfield and allows Keith Jackson to get open on the pass pattern. The fact that Randall Cunningham has an opportunity to sit back and focus downfield and throw the football. Second down and one. Crowd revived interest. They were sleepwalking until the Eagles came alive with that 83-yard drive late in the first half. On second and one, Cunningham goes left side, caught by Byers. And east of the 45-yard line, Philadelphia looks sharp to open the third quarter. Gene Lockhart with the tackle. Now, what has apparently happened is when Philadelphia went into the, at the half, they say, hey, look, if we allow our quarterback some time, we can take advantage of the defenses that they're playing because they're playing kind of soft on our receivers. Now, one of the guys that they're playing soft on is Keith Jackson, number 88. The other guy, Byers, coming out of the sec out of the backfield. But now watch that double team on Tutal, slow blocking with the tight end. Jackson stays in and helps out on Tutal. Ron Heller also got the block. It's first and 10 Eagles. Trap play inside. Big hole. Junior Tottle Atossi had come into the backfield, number 37. And a quick opener. He spurts up the middle over left guard and center. And Tottle Atossi with a big gain to the 35. Or as Buddy Ryan calls him, Junior Smith, because he can't pronounce his name. Now, the one thing about Buddy, though, is at least now that he's the head coach, he's actually trying to use names. When he was in Chicago, the only thing he would use, do is use numbers. So he, Otis Wilson was 55, and he'd never call him Otis. <laughs> what did he call you? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> we don't throw that curve at me. Now we're back to where we can't use microphones again. Uh, here's the stretch of the chain, just short. <laughs> but a most impressive <laughs> eagle drive. Kevin Brooks, bruised neck, and will be back in the lineup. That's the report from the Cowboy bench. He's back in right now, as a matter of fact. So a couple of plays on the bench, and Brooks is back in. Now, the one thing in, in the maturation of Randy, uh, Randall Cunningham is what you're seeing is the fact that now he knows how to make those adjustments when he comes to the line of scrimmage. He's not necessarily nervous back there now. He sees something, and he says, oh, I can take advantage of this, rather than saying, gee, what are they doing? They're moving around on me. Waist down now for the Eagles, second and a foot. Garrity goes left. 20-7, to 11.54 to go, third quarter. Remington over the ball. Tony and Tuttle and Tossi in the backfield play fake. Cunningham left side. Caught by Tuttle and Tossi, and he does have enough to move the chain. His forward progress inside the 35. That should be a first down Eagles. Again, a surprising score. Atlanta in front of the Giants there. New Orleans leads the Raiders in the tough one. Now, what, the, what you're seeing with Philadelphia, though, is they've established a little bit of a running game now to use their play action. And you're seeing those offensive linemen, once again, even on play action, they'll sell the play action by firing out, then they'll snap those arms out, and again, they're getting that separation. Randall Cunningham sits back and says, hey, this is great, I'm not even getting my uniform dirty now. They will bring the chain across to see if he got the first down. The other thing we talked about with the uh, Dallas defense is the fact they're playing in that flex, and it takes a little bit of your aggressiveness away. And they're talking to Too Tall, he said, yeah, that, that, honest, quite honestly, it does, but he kind of likes it after he made a couple of Pro Bowls off of it. There is Too Tall Jones. Never has missed a game for the Cowboys in 14 years. So we were joking, we're calling him the Abdul Jabbar of football. He says, I don't mind that. <laughs> I asked him last night how close he had ever come to missing a game. He said about five years ago. The Cowboys have never lost two in a row to Philadelphia since 1967. 
Tutal said he almost missed one five years ago. But by Sunday morning, his knee, which he had injured, felt good. He played and played the entire game. He's playing in his 200th game today. Cunningham with the rollout. Lobs it deep. First down to 17. Michael Downs and Bill Bates, but not before the Eagles get another first and 10. A gain of 19 yards. Now, what's happening along that Dallas defensive line? First, they shift from a 4-3 flex to an over defense. Now, what that means is there's no defensive uh, end over the, the tight end, Keith Jackson. Now, they're switching back, and they get caught right in the middle of the play in the switch. Jackson breaks open. Bates can't cover him right away. He makes the reception. Keith fires back in the lineup. Garrity goes wide left. Carter is wide right. Cowboys adjust their defense. First and 10 Eagles trailing by 13. Anthony Tony tests the middle of the line and finds it good for a gain of about three. Yeah, but you know what? That Philadelphia offensive line is really has not opened up a hole in the middle for any of their running backs so far today. They've had a lot of difficulty running inside with Brooks and those guys inside there. For some reason, though, they have not really focused in on trying to run some sweeps today and testing the outside and the perimeter of that Dallas defense. Second down and eight. Ball at the 14. Ten minutes to go, third quarter. Again, Garrity breaks off on the left side where he works against Robert Williams. And Carter also goes left. Everson Walls goes over to work on him. Split backs from the 14-yard line. You see Cunningham checking down. Has to hurry to beat the 45-second clock and does. Heads left, pulls up, fires it away, threw it away. Danny Noonan is complaining that he was held, and he's not going to win the argument. Noonan with another good job of almost spying on, on Cunningham. Well, what they're doing is they're, they're faking that blitz up inside. Sometimes they're coming with it. What that, that causes Cunningham to do is check off. Right now, he says, I'm going to go to the audible. That time he rolled out trying to roll away from the blitz. And then Danny Noonan, now you see him arguing his case. He's saying, hey, I'm being held in there. But, you know, the officials get, get kind of used to that. They say the defensive linemen are always saying they're being held. And as an offensive lineman, I always said I've never held an honest man in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Third and eight. Prevent defense in for the Cowboys. Hendricks and Ron Francis. 20 to 7. Dallas leads it. Three wide receiver set. The clock down to three seconds, and Cunningham has to call timeout. They took an extraordinarily long time to call the play in the huddle. So Cunningham took one glance at the 45 second clock. It showed three seconds, and he said, timeout. Tom Landry's Dallas Cowboy team thoroughly dominant in the first quarter of the game. They jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead. A late eagle drive made it 20 to 7 before halftime, and now Philadelphia right back in this. They have driven to the 14. They have a third and eight, trailing by 13. Randall Cunningham in a shotgun blitz. One of the few times Dallas has blitzed today, and they get Cunningham for the fourth time. It's Kevin Brooks. And you really get the feeling on that play that maybe Randall Cunningham should have thrown the ball away through the back of the end zone rather than taking the sack and losing another 10 to 12 yards on the play. Kevin Brooks has an exceptional effort up front, number 99. You see him going along with the, the rollout action here. Now, finally, he gets away from Ron Solt and makes the sack. Solt's got to realize, though, you know, Randall Cunningham's one of those quarterbacks that will take it right to the sideline and then pinpoint it down in the end zone, so you have to give him that break and opportunity. That brings on Luis Zendejas, who has hit five in a row since joining the Eagles. This will be from 40 yards away. Got it. 39 yards officially, six in a row for the former Cowboy, Luis Zendejas. And that cuts what had been a 20-point lead in the middle. 9.13 to go before halftime. And two back-to-back -back impressive drives now for the Eagles. That's right. Now that what they're doing is they're playing their game, and they're saying to Dallas, okay, you guys think you can go to sleep on us now. Now we're going to start putting some points on the board. And then late in the game, if you have not been up for the second half, then it gets really difficult to come back and start the engine again late in the game if you're the, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Buddy Ryan's team comes in. Trailing three teams in the NFC East by a game, and you saw the Giants are struggling already today to Atlanta. And Buddy Ryan, uh, he has his offensive coordinator, Ted Plum, who when we were all with the Bears was the offensive uh, uh, receiver coach. Uh, now he said that Ted Plum is just like him in those offensive meetings. 
you know, he really gets after guys when he needs to, but he thinks just like Buddy Ryan. And you see that kind of aggressive game plan they've gone to now with the Philadelphia Eagles. But now the, the opportunity is here for Steve Pelour and the Cowboys to make a big charge back and try to seal this thing up. Zendejas will kick off. Cowboys have Cornell Burbage and Kelvin Martin deep. 20 to 10. It was 20 zip. High and short. Burbage at the 16. Comes near side and is knocked out of bounds across the 30 near the 32 yard line. And Steve Pelour leads the Dallas Cowboy offense back on the field after a 16 yard return. Pelour with a terrific first half in which he hit 19 of 25 for 198 yards. Next Sunday, great NFL doubleheader action beginning with the NFL today. In the first game, many of you will see Chicago, New England. There are the other games on the menu. Rams, New Orleans, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Green Bay, Buffalo. And then most of you will watch Minnesota, San Francisco in the second game. Others will watch the Giants and Detroit. First and 10, Dallas. There's the up and down set. Newsom and Walker in the backfield. Herschel Walker, 66 yards in the ground in the first half. Play fake. And Pelour pumps and is nailed. Second sack today. And he had been sacked just five times in the first seven games. And then, of course, uh, when they went to the Chicago game, they took advantage of him, got five sacks on him. Now, that play, though, I'll say if I'm the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, I'll accept that sack because he didn't throw the football into coverage. He said, I'll accept the sack, and we'll just reset it again. Randall Cunningham calling for some help. He says, hey, look, I mean, you guys upstairs can see something better than I can. Tell me what to do down here. Second down at 14, 8.43 remaining in the ball in the third quarter. Play fake again to Herschel Walker and Pelour going deep left side. Man wide open, Kelvin Martin, as once again they work on the rookie, Eric Allen. And once again, you know, they're working that sideline. Very difficult for, if, you're, if your cornerback is playing inside for uh, coverage on a receiver, and that receiver is breaking to the sideline, it makes it very difficult for a young cornerback to play it. And there you see him, he's inside. Now, watch Martin break back to the outside, right to the sideline, and he doesn't get that help from down deep from the linebacker. Eric Allen, that's the ninth time they've thrown on him today. Second round draft choice out of Arizona State. First and 10, Dallas after a 17-yard game. Ball at the 45. Cowboys up 20 to 10. Walker gets the handoff and tests left guard. That's a gain of three out to the 48-yard line. Total yards in the first quarter. Look at the Cowboy total yardage, 134 to 42, but it's evened out since then. Yeah, and Philadelphia has really gotten it cranked up offensively and the result of Randall Cunningham, as we said earlier, getting time to set up back there, look downfield and take advantage of some opportunities. Now Steve Pelor's opportunity here is to put some more points on the board and try to pull away from the Eagles if possible. Second down and six. Pelor scrambles right, pulls up, tries to get by Joyner and does. And Pelor has a first down for the Cowboys at the 40. Where, as Randall Cunningham will do, so also will Steve Pelor. Now, you know what, he, what happens, he rolls up, comes around to that corner, doesn't see a linebacker there, because Jordan had already missed him. He says, hey, I can, I can roll with it now. I can go downfield a little bit. But he does a smart thing, too. He gets out of bounds before he takes the shot. Pelor had his best game of the year in the Monday night encounter against New Orleans. And the Cowboys feel like losing that one as they did at the gun cost them emotionally for the next two weeks. There's no question when you've got 20-some guys that are one or two years experience to use a game like that, it hurts. Deep handoff to Walker. He's jammed up by Seth Joyner. No gain, maybe a foot or two. Now you ask what's the best way to stop Herschel Walker? With some help. <laughs> Get some other folks up there to help you out a little bit. This guy's playing good football for the Eagles, so Seth Joyner is. I found what Buddy uh, Ryan had to say about Seth Joyner quite interesting yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said a lot of folks are talking about Carl Banks as one of the better linebackers in the league. I think Seth Joyner is a better linebacker than Carl Banks. And that's because he can play his defense like he likes it played. Yeah, I don't know if he'd get a vote from everybody else about that. I've got to tell you a funny story about Buddy Ryan. Now, he always used to take Al Alka Seltzer before games. What do you think he's doing now that he's the head coach? Same thing. <laughs> Second and nine for Lohr. Deep in the middle for Chandler incomplete. And Joyner was right with him and helped harass him. Then Wes Hopkins was behind him. It'll be third and nine. 
Now, you, you, what you're looking at now is an emotional turnaround uh, in terms of the way the game has been flowing, and that is the emotion has turned in, in the favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. This was a critical drive, though, because now if they can keep that level up and stop the Cowboys right here, they're in great shape. If they allow the Cowboys to come down and get a score, then the whole thing goes back up for grabs. Cowboys have moved from their own 31 to the Eagles 40, so they haven't been stopped yet. It is third and nine. Eagles are blitzing. Ballour off balance, caught somehow short of the first down at the 31. Andre Waters makes the tackle on Ray Alexander, who made a nice grab in traffic. He did, but, you know, he's helping out his quarterback because he starts working back towards the quarterback, recognizing the scramble situation. Now, interesting, it's fourth and less than a yard at the 30-yard line. And will Landry go for it? Does he think Herschel Walker can get the first down? Or somebody? And he's sending in the tight ends, the two tight ends. Yep. They're not going to go for the field goal. So here come the Eagles with their goal line defense. Fourth and a foot. And the Cowboys Dallas. use a timeout. timeout. You know, when you start thinking about what that could mean later on, you saw what happened in the first half when they burned those timeouts. That play should have been ready to go right away, so that way you keep things rolling and you don't have to burn that timeout. But Tom Landry says, hey, it's important for me here to stop and make sure we're successful on this play. Go back on that third and nine as Steve Pallor looked for Ray Alexander. Here's Alexander to the left. Now he's getting that bump up front by Allen. Now watch him turn back inside. He recognizes now, though, that Steve Pallor is running around. So he's working back towards the football, and he gets a great shot there from Philadelphia, from two Philadelphia defenders, one of them being Eric Allen. And Andre Waters is the guy who got down. And really delivered on, his, on the bottom of his feet. Now the question always is forward progress. Where did he get hit from and where did he end up at? But uh, it's apparent that he didn't end up over in the first down territory. He needed to cross the 30-yard line was the key, and he never did it. Here's Jim Merkebeck in there. He's, he's, like, he's getting all excited. He's getting worked up. Well, do this, do that. I got my 300-pounders up front. Go back and take a look at that third down play and watch the 45-second clock behind Pelour. See it? Two seconds, and he still hasn't snapped the ball. And that's been a problem for the Cowboys this afternoon. It shows two seconds. They have, as everybody in the country, I think, knows, a very complex offense. Mm -hmm. Now, no complexity involved in this. Fourth and a foot at the 30. And for some reason, Dick Hantak sends them back to the huddle. And see, now this hurts the offense because you want to get out there and, and attack, and you can't because they're, they're holding you back in the huddle, and you want to get up there and go after it. Because you know what the play is, and you know what you've got to do. See if the Cowboys have Chandler, Folsom, and Cosby, all three tight ends in. Or do they have a go with a wide receiver set? When they lined up, it looked like they were going with a wide receiver. Now Bob White, number seven, or Daryl Smith, rather, number 79, is in. And it's three tight ends against the goal line offense of the Eagles. In the eye, Walker the deep back. Fourth and a foot. Herschel Walker, that's real close. And I don't believe he got it. No, sir. Burn short yardage situation, a yard or less to go. Why do you line up in the eye where your running back that's going to carry the ball is eight yards in back of you? Yeah, he gets to build up a little momentum, but the other thing is, though, is the defensive line has an opportunity to make penetration and stop him before he gets to the line of scrimmage, and he can try to jump or try to run through somebody. The key is run out of one of your brown or your red sets and just hand it off real quick. They didn't even have to measure. Cunningham slips the ball to Anthony Tony. Fumble. A scramble at the 32, and let's see, the Cowboys say they've got it. The Eagles have fumbled only three times, two times all year. And this is only the third fumble this season they have lost. Hmm. Cunningham, now he's going to come back and hand off to Tony. Tony tries to go over the left side, stops, puts on the brakes there, turns back. And there you see the tackle by Jeff Coat, and that ball just simply slips out of his hand. A little help there from Danny Noonan, but it really slipped out. 
Ron Burton came up with it. First time since the Houston and Minnesota games that the Eagles have lost a fumble. They led the league, or still do, in least number of lost fumbles. It's now three. And the Cowboys have turned to have gotten two turnovers, one interception, one fumble recovery. Ball at the 33, first and 10. Reggie White lines up over center, over Tom Rafferty. Newsom in motion. Walker out of the tackle to the 24-yard line. A gain of eight. Eagles jump into that 46. That's when you see Reggie White go over to center. And then what happens there is the Dallas Cowboys just split it open over on that right side. And when that happens, there's nobody back there because all the linebackers are up on the line of scrimmage trying to make the stop there. That's a gain of eight. Second down and two. Walker with 80 rushing yards. The Eagles have 26. We said earlier that they have to get the, the ball in the hands of Herschel Walker. Well, they've been effective at both getting it into other people's hands and at the opportune time getting it into Herschel's hands. Second down. And again, the deep handoff to Walker. He's hit behind the line and knocked down. This time it's Clyde Simmons, number 96. Well, you know, we talk a lot about Reggie White, but this guy's been playing some good football for the Philadelphia Eagles as well. What he does is he gives you that good pressure on that defensive inside, and suddenly you can't go outside like you really want to. And we said earlier, well, gee, how come they're not testing those corners a little bit? Well, that's one of the reasons why Clyde Simmons. Third and four. Cowboys are three of seven on third down conversions, trying to convert this turnover into something. Pelor from the shotgun. And the Eagles are blitzing. Ballora reads the hot receiver, Kelvin Martin. What a catch! Oh, boy! A terrific catch by the 5'9", Kelvin Martin. A gain of 12 first down. Well, you know, he does so many things so well for the Cowboys. You look at all the special teams plays and everything else. Ballora, great job of getting the ball away on the blitz. Now, watch this. Reach out, both feet in. Tip-tap there, and he is in for the, for the excellent reception on the sideline. For Kelvin Martin today, that's his sixth catch for 71 yards. And he's still playing with that cast on his left hand, and he makes a great grab like that. First and 10 at the 15. Backs in the eye again. Martin, the motion man. And the draw play to Herschel Walker. Down to 12. Tackle made by Seth Joyner. Mike Fitch was in the backfield and had an opportunity to make the play back there, but really got pushed out of the way just as he's reaching in to make the, the uh, tackle. Now, let's not lose the idea of this emotional struggle that we've been talking about. Uh, now, the Philadelphia Eagles, you had the opportunity there. You stop the, the Cowboys on fourth and short. Then you get the ball back. Now you drop it on the ground and you lose the fumble. Suddenly, now this, the defense is depressed because they've been out on that field too long. Receiver again, man open in the end zone, tipped away. Roynell Young, a terrific recovery. Well, that was a great play by Roynell. He knew he was beaten. He just reached up the last second, tips the ball away, and makes a, a Pro Bowl type play. You hear you see just the end of it. Now watch as that ball is delivered. Watch him just reach up and slap it away, just like he's playing basketball. That's being on top of things. That's what the difference is between a young cornerback and one that's been around the corner a few times. Now third and seven, will they go back at Roy L. Young or will they attack Eric Allen again as they have most of the most of the ball game? I, I see Todd Bell, number 52, coming out, which is their pass defense line linebacker. So I have to think that they're gonna go back over this side, come down to number 21, Eric Allen, and test him out. No shotgun. Ballora back. Looks left, just gets rid of it. Alexander can't hang on. They went at Allen with Alexander. And that'll bring on the field goal unit after the incomplete pass. Ruzek has hit two of two. And the other thing, too, is now he's going to put another three. He's going to try to put another three on the board. Yeah, they didn't get the seven, but they'll take the three now. They've burned up some more of the clock. Though. Clock now down to 349 to go third quarter. Boy, you're right. You talked about the emotion of that defensive fourth down stand, and then the first play, they they're back on the back. field. That's right, and that really takes some gas out of you. 30-yard effort for Ruzek, who's two of two this afternoon. And six of 12 for the year. Pelora will hold. Ruzak kicks it. Got it. 
So the youngster who was 22 of 25 a year ago, but has been in a horrible slump this season, is now a perfect three of three for the day. He fumbled in the first play. Dallas was able to get a Roger Ruzek field goal out of that to increase their lead once again to 13 points. 23-10. 66,309 are here today. Only 319 no-shows. High kick. Sean Beals running start at the seven. And he is grabbed by an arm by Steve Diossi, who did a nice job on the special teams to make that tackle. 19-yard return. And another little breakout of things. Randall Cunningham back on the field. Now, you know, the thing that surprised me about Randall Cunningham, he's the quarterback that wears a mouthpiece. Look at that. You can see he's been under a little pressure today. Four sacks, eight carries, three knockdowns, one batted ball, and one interception. That's, you know, that's tough to have a great day when those kinds of things are happening to you. Cunningham is 15 of 22 for 167 yards. Keith Jackson is primary receiver, and he's back to throw on first down. Deep left side, Robert Williams defending, and the pass is incomplete as they tested Williams down the left side. You see that mouthpiece. Most quarterbacks and most players in the National Football League don't wear mouthpieces, but uh, he's a guy that likes his choppers, and he keeps them in. I'm sure all the dentists around the country are going, right on, Randall. Got a great set of look at choppers. <laughs> That's right. Likes his eyes, too. He's got that mask on. Oh, I think the day is going to come when everybody's going to have that clear mask. Because, Do you really? Yeah, it protects your eyes because a lot of times you'll get those fingers in your eyes or very close to them, and it gives you that extra measure of protection. Second down and 10. 3.32 to go, third quarter. Quick drop left side, mix up with Greg Garrity, and it'll be third and ten. Now, let's go back to our New York studios for an update. Here's Brent Musburger in New York. Laverne Vinny Testaverde of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has thrown five interceptions today against Minnesota. That is now 21 for the year, and at Miami, Vern, when he started for two years, only 24 total interceptions. Also, Atlanta leads the Giants by 10. Back to Vern. 23-10, 3.29 to go, third and 10 for the Eagles. High snap, controlled by Cunningham. Again, he goes left, and again, there's a mix-up, and there is no flag. Feet got tangled at the 42, Garrity and Ron Francis. And the Eagles will call on John Pilcher. Watch Greg Garrity and Ron Francis left side. Now this is a timing pattern, so uh, watch Garrity 86. He's working against Francis 38. And he goes down, he's trying to make his break back there, but the ball's been already delivered in the air, and, Gr and Greg Garrity finds himself on the ground when the ball's at the spot. That brings on John Pilcher, who had a 70-yard punt to open the ball game. Another fine effort by Pilcher. Kelvin Martin, fair catch at the 30-yard line. And Terry Hogue was right in his face. A 44-yard punt by Pelchik. Cowboys have the ball again. Along with Dan Jiggins, veteran stadium in Philadelphia, as we reach the midway point of the 1988 season. These two teams in a struggle, a grudge match after bitterness erupted in the two teams last year. Cowboys won the strike game 41-22. Eagles won up here 37-20. Dallas leads it right now 23-10, 3.17 to go third quarter. Glenn Titanser is in at left guard replacing Nate Newton and Herschel Walker is wrapped up by number 99, Jerome Brown. Walker closing in on a 100-yard day. He's got over 80 on the ground now. Then one of the things the Cowboys told us last night, they said, hey, look, we recognize that number 92, Reggie White, is an exceptional football player, and we're not going to be foolish enough to think that we're going to run at him. We're going to try to run away from him. Yeah, he may get you in pursuit, but they're taking care of him with some backside blocking and that zone protection that they have. As a result, he really hasn't been a big factor in the run game against the Cowboys today and in the passing game because they've doubled him both times. Now he comes over Rafferty, second down and 10. That's a blown play. And that's the third sack for Steve Pallor today. And again, Pallor himself had been sacked only five times. The Cowboys did get to Danny White, or the uh, Bears did five times last week after Pallor went out with a concussion. Danny White, by the way, is back on injured reserve now and did not make the trip with the Cowboys. Third in a bunch. Now, this defensive line of the Eagles has been called one of the better ones in the National Football League. Now is the time to prove it. Now is the time if you can put pressure on the quarterback, get the sacks, 
and force them interceptions, that's when you really are the best defensive line in football. And also for the Cowboys, it's a particularly good challenge now. Third and 14. No blitz, stunts by the defensive line, and Pelour flushed out, comes across the middle to Everett Gay, and he should have enough to move the chain. Talk about finding an alternate receiver. Boy, I tell you what, and the other thing, though, Steve Pelour is rolling right, throws back across his body to Everett Gay, who's in the middle of the field, and Pelour is all the way over near the numbers when he makes the pass. That's a third and 14, and I think, yes, indeed, Everett Gay does have enough for the first down. Yeah, now watch this. Pelour drops back, sees it's getting kind of busy in there, so he decides to exit stage right. Now he looks downfield, and he finds Gay thrown back across the body, as we said, and that is an exceptionally difficult pass to throw, and Gay makes a nice reception downfield. First and 10, Dallas at the 41. The Cowboys now 5 of 10 on third down conversions, and they continue to work on the clock, which shows 1.20 to go in the quarter. Walker doesn't get much help. Boy, Todd Bell did a great oh, job boy, of coming Timmy, in and forcing him outside. He really did. And what happened with Timmy Newsom tried to cut him down there, Todd. Good athlete jumps over the cut block and then forces Herschel back into the backfield. He can't turn the corner then. That is the 22nd carry for Herschel Walker for 81 yards. It's a good work day for Herschel. You know, he's, he's one of those guys, though, that the longer the game goes on, the better he gets at it. You know, he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Second and ten. Alexander comes left. Kelvin Martin goes right. Pelour now 23 of 32 for 248 yards. There we go again. Timeout. Dallas. That is their second timeout. This is a 40-second timeout. 40-second timeout, and Steve Pelour might not want to go to the sideline and talk to Landry. Yeah. He might choose to. Well, he's going to do it. Not a good place to be, though. You're going to catch some heat, but you know what it usually is, is, again, with the complications and the formations, if everybody comes in and they're not quite aware of what the deal is, then they have to call a timeout because they're getting that play in from the sideline. He's got to figure it out, decipher the signals, give it to the line, then they got to do that shift, and then everybody else has to shift, and it takes a lot of time up. And particularly when you get the defense moving around on you a little bit, then you say, oh, oh, wait a minute, maybe I should audible here. And that's when the doubt falls in, and when in doubt, don't call timeout. If you did join us late, the Cowboys had to use all three of their timeouts because of problems with the 45-second clock in the first quarter of the ball game. And they've now used two of their three in the third quarter of the second half. They have a second down and 10, leading 23 to 10 with 1.13 to go, third quarter. Chandler is the motion man. Pelour, short drop, goes for Chandler right side, and Andre Waters is right at his waist. Andre Waters wants a free agent leading the team in tackles with 70. That is not terribly unusual to see your strong safety leading the team in tackles. And, and he's a tough guy, too. He's one of those safeties that you know, if you're hanging around, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you feel the play, you better buckle up because he's coming after you. Last time the Cowboys had a third and long, it was third and 14. A moment ago, they got a pass to Everett Gay. Now it's third down and eight in the final 40 seconds of the third quarter. No blitz by the Eagles. Pelour left side as they work on Allen, and he overthrows Ray Alexander, who was double covered by Eric Allen and Wes Hopkins. And that'll bring on Mike Saxon. Send deep Mark Konechny. Clock down to 27 seconds, third quarter. Cowboys are at home next week against Phoenix. They may have the toughest schedule in the National Football League this year. It's very difficult, but when you look at the Eagles as well, their schedule is awfully difficult. You know, both of these teams, you figured maybe they were going to get a break this year with the scheduling, but no way. Philadelphia at home against Atlanta next week, and then they've got the Rams coming in. Whoops, there's motion in the offensive line. They got set. They did get set, but Saxon line drives it. Now the flag is down. The ball will come to a rest at the nine-yard line, but the Cowboys might get the penalty on the delayed flag. No, it's holding Dallas. Holding Dallas, and there's an altercation down at the 20-yard line that's quickly broken up. A 48-yard punt will be wiped out. Tom Landry of set mode. 
<laughs> How you like the mod glasses, though? Huh? Yeah, he's getting Some change. Too he's, many days in the sun. He's falling into fashion, though. I like it. Yeah. Holding offense, number 31, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. Billy Owens with the holding call. So now, instead of giving the Eagles the ball at the nine yard line they may be the recipient of a terrific break here because uh, despite the line drive punt by Saxon it did get a cowboy roll. And now the key is to see how Philadelphia takes advantage of this new opportunity. Mark Konechny moves up to the 25 yard line. And Saxon has it nearly blocked. Konechny back out of a tackle and can't get out of the other one, but they gain 15 yards after the 10-yard penalty. A 43-yard punt, but instead of having the ball at the 9, they've got it at the 25, the tackle made by Billy Bates. Okay, Vern, now you're in the uh, in the offensive uh, huddle mm -hmm. for the Philadelphia Eagles. What are you thinking about now? Where's Keith Jackson? That's right. And working those sidelines, saving that clock as much as you possibly can, because time is getting uh, short here. Now we're just about to end the third quarter and going into the fourth. You work the sidelines. You just try to stay out to your receivers. Throw short, because that's where you've been successful at. Jackson tight to the right. The wide receivers are left. Final play of the third quarter. Cunningham. Goes right side for Jackson, wide open, and behind him. He had turned Bill Bates completely around. He turned Bill Bates completely around, and I think he faked out Randall Cunningham. Cunningham was expecting him to turn around and come back to the outside. He got excited with the move that he was able to put on Bates and stayed with it. There he gets a nice escape off the line of scrimmage, gets past Burton. Now he sets up Billy Bates. Now I see he turns inside, but that ball is thrown outside, and it was clear that he was supposed to turn outside. You think some of these players aren't multi-dimensional? Keith Jackson out of Oklahoma plays the cello. Yeah, he said he didn't want to play the violin and look like a girl's instrument. One of his dreams is to play with the Philadelphia Orchestra under Ricardo Moody. Here's Cunningham, deep left side. Double coverage, knocked away. Terrific defensive job by Robert Williams. And Cunningham has misfired on his last six passes. And it's apparent that Robert Williams is in a little pain. He's, hurt, he's holding his ribs here, but watch the play that he makes here. He's got Garrity going down one side here. Now watch him just jump up and tap that ball away. Hits him right on the face mask and then goes to the ground. Yeah, it's that terrific play, and then we watched him miss the ball. Yeah, <laughs> it hit him in the face, though. You know, it's a good spot. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. The good time. Great. Third and ten as we open the final quarter. Cunningham pumps once, goes across the middle, incomplete. Keith Jackson. He's going to argue that he was interfered with by Everson Walls. But no way, that was good timing on Everson Walls' part. Number 24, he just, he hit that leg just as the ball was being delivered. Now here you see number 88, that's Keith Jackson. You know, watch him on the impact, he gives a little out fake there. Had Everson on the fake, but there, he's just there. Perfect timing on the play. And Randall Cunningham has missed his last seven passes in succession. Here's John Kelsey to punt. Another dandy punt. Delvin Martin at the 30. Nice downfield play. William Frizzell made the tackle. His nickname is Lefty. He's called Lefty by Buddy Ryan because of his last name, Frizzell. Buddy Ryan knows a country singer named Lefty Frizzell. <laughs> Here comes Pelora back on. 24 of 34 for 250. Cunningham has missed his last seven. He's 15 of 27 for 167. And the other key there for Steve Pelor, no interceptions today. That's a big move for him when you start thinking about what's happened to him in ball games. Uh, he has season. had interception problems in the fourth quarter, however. The Cowboys are minus five in turnovers in the fourth quarter. And as a team, they've thrown six interceptions in quarter number four this year. First and ten Dallas, they lead it by 13. Play fake. Batted back and almost picked off. Clyde Simmons almost had one. Look at it. He's, he had visions of strolling in the end zone, getting a good spike and all the rest of that. Made a great play on it, but he just didn't get a hold of it and take it into the end zone. He's had a dandy game. He there. sure has. He's been playing very well. Left side of your screen, number 96. That's Clyde Simmons. Now watch him here. He doesn't take the fake on the play action. He simply reaches up and bats that Steve Pelour pass down. 
and he just about had it and took it to the end zone. But, uh, you know, those defensive linemen, they get so anxious when they see the ball up in the air and they say, gee, I can grab it, you know. They don't know how to catch. There's the turnover story in the fourth quarter. The Eagles are plus five, the Cowboys minus five. That's for the season. Left side this time, incomplete. And a flag thrown on Eric Allen. Oh, wow. Who, me? <laughs> You know what you know what the play should have really been called down on the line of scrimmage. Jerome Brown was held. He was dragged down actually on the line of scrimmage on that play. And he turned around and complained. Defense number 21. Eric Allen on the penalty here. Kalur over to the left side of your screen. Eric Allen there on the coverage and he gets into the receiver way before that ball ever gets there. And I guess Ray Alexander just sat there and said, hey, I'll take that, you know, just give me the yardage. That must be, Dan, at least 11 times now they've thrown at Allen. Yeah, they've been picking on him. There's no question about it. But, you know, one of the things that happens is a guy like Allen, when I was reading an, an article about him earlier this week, he said, hey, look, I just make those adjustments. I don't, I don't let it, you know, I don't dwell on it. I just keep trying to develop and learn things. First and 10 at the 47. Cowboys up 23-10. And again, the play fake by Pelour. He looks deep into zone coverage for Alexander and Andre Waters makes a center field catch. Oh, that was a poor pass. Andre Waters, Pelour never should have let it go because Waters and Allen had Alexander blanketed. That's right, they had him on both sides. They bracketed him as he went down the field and Andre Waters makes a beautiful reception right over the shoulder. Now watch, Pelour throw right down the middle of the field. He's got Alexander on the go pattern. Now watch Waters come in and he just makes this one right over the shoulder. Now makes a nice little return here, heads up towards that sideline. Hey, he's got that ball handled it kind of loosely, but watch him take off over there and get tackled on the sideline. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. The good time, great taste of McDonald's. And by Coors Light, there's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. to play after the interception by Andre Waters. First turnover by the Cowboys today. Randall Cunningham has his team with a first down at the 25-yard line. Byers and Tony behind Cunningham. They'll slip it. Whoa, fumble. And Cunningham is squashed upon. Mix up on the handoff. In a rather appropriate way to put it when Jeff Coat <laughs> lands on you like that. Now, he turned around and tried to spin around and hand it off, but he's really putting it on his hip when he handed it off. And as a result, it just dropped to the turf. That'll set up a second down and 14. Garrity comes left. Keith Byers, the back, is split wide to the right side. Cowboys are caught shifting. And there's the bat back. Was that too tall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course it was too tall. That is the 77th knockdown of a pass. And that's only in the last nine years because they didn't keep that stat before that. That's right. He's the control defensive end for the Cowboys. His job is not really to penetrate so much as to play the policeman along the line of scrimmage and watch for draw plays. Now, what he does is he makes that penetration finally about four or five yards, jumps up in the air, and that's what he's trying to do is swat it down. And it's 6-9. It's awfully difficult to get something over a guy like that, uh, particularly when he jumps. Five of his batted passes have been intercepted, and three have been returned for touchdown. Third and 14. Cunningham with time. Goes left for Byers who drops it. It was a little bit behind him, but certainly catchable. Randall Cunningham, young quarterback, is going through those little uh, oscillations that you see in a quarterback's career sometimes, particularly when a guy is young. He's having a little trouble now. His back, his back is against the wall, and he just can't seem to get it in gear in this fourth quarter so far. Eagles this year have been unable to come from behind, as you can see. And they trail by 13 right now, 23-10 with 13.57 to go. Pelchik's punt. Boy, he's had a good day. That's another dandy. Kelvin Martin at the 31. And, oh, boy. <laughs> no flag. David Little came rolling over the top. A 48-yard punt. And just a couple on the return. Scott Curtis made the tackle. Cowboys have the ball back. The question before the jury is, did David Little get away with one on the punt return? Let's I don't check think, Kelvin Martin and see. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. Now watch him in the middle of your screen. He's going to be number 89 in the, in the white. Then. Now watch him. He takes off now. 
and he just dodged down on Kelvin Martin, who's already down on the turf. Keep in mind how many flags we had early in the game. A lot of whistles, and not many lately. Temple play has settled down. Here's the handoff to Herschel Walker, right side, out near the 40 yard line, with a modest gain of about three. Yeah, but that's a good game plan in the fourth quarter. Now you're ahead. Now you use your running backs, Herschel Walker and, and, and Timmy Newsom. Wear down that clock and wear down the defense of the Philadelphia Eagles. Bob White has come in now for the Cowboys as Crawford Kerr limps off. He'd be the second guard on the bench. Nate Newton has also been replaced by Glenn Titanser. The Cowboys have been weak at tackle because of injuries, and now they've got their starting guards both out of the ball game. And Titanser and Bob White are in the lineup. Second and seven. Bellore, right side, Kelvin Martin. Seventh catch, first down at the 50-yard line. Interesting story about Kelvin Martin, and Cowboy fans will recall this. He was a third-round draft choice a year ago, but almost an unwanted third-round draft choice. The Cowboys had tried to make a deal to get Stephen Baker. They tried to trade up in the draft and swing a deal with Denver to go in front of the Giants. Time expired. They didn't get it done. George Young of the Giants said, we take Stephen Baker. Well, you know the old saying, some of the best deals are the ones that are never made. <laughs> and I think the Cowboys are quite content with Kelvin Martin now. First and 10 Dallas at the 50. They'll work on the clock with Herschel Walker. He comes right, flag is down. Cowboys are going to get caught holding. And Mike Reichenbach might have been held. It's going to be holding Dallas. And it's either going to be on Kevin Gogan or Tom Rafferty. Yeah, but the whole key there, if you're on that offensive line, is get away from the flag. See, because a lot of times these officials know they saw a holding, but they're not quite sure who it was. So that as quick as you can get away from them, and kind of disappear. And offense, number 66. 10-yard penalty, repeat the down. You see, the, the, the wily old veteran Rafferty, he ducked out of there, and they He's got gone. the got young right. guy. Yeah, He's, they got Gogan. He looks right and says, I'm out of here, okay? <laughs> Kevin Gogan, who was angry with his quarterback, Steve Pallor, because Pallor, a week or so ago, bought tickets to a concert in Dallas for his wide receivers. And didn't buy them for the offensive line. Right. Said he needs to think about us. <laughs> First and 20, Dallas, 23-10, they lead it. How about that Atlanta lead over the Giants? The lower back, left side, almost picked off. Another flag down. We got and we might have roughing the uh, quarterback now. Nope. The lower is up. There's just a wrestling match going on. Yeah, I think it's Gogan uh, who's down there on the turf. No, no, he's not. I'm sorry. Reggie White. I expect that'll be holding Dallas. Yeah, it was a nice takedown on him, too. It was very clean. Holding Dallas. First and 30. White was in the wrestling match. Holding, offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. Watch Reggie White, number 92. It's nice having fun at the old ballpark. Bull rush there. He just runs by Bob. But Bob does the key thing, though. Even if you get the holding penalty, don't let that guy tee off on your quarterback. That's the most important thing you can do. And, yeah, the defensive linemen get frustrated, but, you know, they're frustrated because they can't hit your quarterback. That's the idea. Cowboys now with a first and 30, and still 12 minutes to go in the game. And the crowd trying to urge this Eagle defense back into it. First down and 30. Newsom in motion. And they'll hand it off to Herschel Walker, and he won't get a thing. You look at the Cowboy offensive linemen pull out on a play like that. They ran that play, and they really weren't committed to it. You could see it when they tried to pull out and throw their blocks. They're just kind of pulling up out there. If you're going to run that, that counter OT or that counter tray, you've got to sell this thing and really punish those guys. Now, watch the backside guard and tackle. I really don't see anybody up there putting a shoulder on anybody. It's really soft blocking at the point of attack, and as a result, Herschel Walker almost gets killed at the corner. I have seen the Washington Redskins look a little better executing that play. And you see Jim Ergenbeck, he's seen better execution by his lineman, too. You saw him shaking his head there. Second down and 30, no gain for Walker. He's now 84 yards on 24 carries. Galore with a short drop, right side. Chandler nailed by Seth Joyner. Buddy Ryan might be right about Seth Joyner. He's all over it. I tell you what, as soon as a receiver comes into his area of responsibility, he's on him like sweat. I like that. <laughs> That's being on somebody, too. Third and 27. 
Clock running with 10.49 to go. Now, emotionally, again, you start thinking about where the Eagles might be in their frame of mind now. They've been able to bottle up the Cowboys so far in this, in this quarter. Now, if they can stop them here, get the ball back, and get some kind of a score out of the offense, they're right back in the thing, and they've, you know, they've got that up feeling again. Third, Third and 27. Cowboys are minus six in turnovers in the fourth quarter this year. Ballore has thrown one interception in this quarter already. Here's a screen pass to Herschel Walker, and that's going to gain a bunch. It will not be enough for the first down, however. He's down at the 44-yard line by Roynell Young. Yeah, but that was a stroke of genius, a, a genius on the part of the offensive uh, uh, team of the uh, Cowboys. Now you know you're going to get that real hard upfield rush. You throw that middle screen to the, to the uh, halfback who's just nestled in there behind your offensive line. And they gave him some great blocking up front. So Saxon comes on. And in the back of your mind, keep in mind that bonus that he gets for leading the league with punts down inside the 20. He should have this one unless he overkicks Mark Konechny. Saxon has really perfected this art of pooch kicking. And on fourth down, he sends it high. That may be too strong. Well, good downfield coverage from Francis, who jumps up and downs it at the one. Oh, what a great play by Ron Francis. No touchback. That's down at the one-yard line. Yeah, for that, Ron Francis ought to at least get a, you know, a grand of that bonus. That was a beautiful play. Turn right around, settle down on the goal line, turn his back to the end zone, and grab the football and downed it. Uh, here's one of those subtle things, Dan, in this game, as you look at Francis, the last two plays, they were facing third and 27. They get a 21-yard pass to Walker. Great field position, and then this punt by Saxon and the, and the play by Francis. And that's the key, too. You know, Francis had a, uh, excuse me, Saxon had enough backspin on that ball to bounce it up off the astroturf, and Francis makes a real smart play down on the goal line. But you're right, suddenly they take themselves out of the hole and put Philly in the hole. Randall Cunningham and the Eagles from their own one-yard line. Keith Byers out to the five. Nice, safe play. <laughs> Either he's got a heck of a headache or it's a little warmer than we thought. <laughs> he's, try he's trying to make the old Madden team and, yeah, that's right. and John's not here. <laughs> Cunningham from the end zone. Left side. Caught. Garrity. That's a first down at the 20-yard line. Nice play by Greg Garrity. Good possession type receiver out of Penn State. Greg Garrity fools you because he doesn't, you know, he gives you a little subtle moves off the line of scrimmage. And he does enough subtle moving here to give Randall Cunningham an opportunity to get him the football. Throwing out of his own end zone over to the left side of your screen. Garrity wide open, breaking to that sideline, trying to save that clock now. He stops the clock with 9.02 to go in the ball game. A first down at the 20. Cunningham from the shotgun. Cowboys have not blitzed defensively much at all today. They stunt defensively in the line. And Cunningham rolls left. Slides out of bounds. And there are no... Now the flag comes. A real late flag. It was so late, I'm wondering if they're going to throw it on the Cowboys for a late hit. It might have been something else. Well, I think the thing is, when the quarterback is out of bounds, he's obviously out of bounds. You have to pull up. And they really started, they started diving from about uh, near the numbers. Gary Cobb this made the Cobb. tackle. Defense number 59. And also got the penalty. Yep. He had the opportunity to pull up, and he didn't. He, you know, he rolled over into the sideline on Randall Cunningham. He just can't get away with that. It's one thing to make the play in the field of play, but he really didn't do that. Now, Cobb, number 59, recognizes the quarterback is going out of bounds. He's going into the slide as well, and then you see him laying up on him. You cannot do that, and particularly when you're inside the bench. I know he used to play for the Eagles. Maybe he thought he was going to go back over there and get some water. What fooled me was the delay in the flag coming out of there, and it finally did. And now the Eagles are at the 41-yard line. Just a moment ago, three plays ago, they were at their own one. Cunningham back. Drills it. Nice defensive play. No flag. Intended for Jackson. And Everson Walls got right in front of him. I tell you what, Everson Walls makes some great plays, and they kind of go unnoticed a lot of the time, but, you know, a regular cornerback, that play would have been completed on somebody. Everson Walls, Wiley veteran, you know, pro bowler and all the rest of that, makes a great play, but it makes it look so easy. He's got only one interception so far, but I think the major reason is because he hasn't seen many passes. That's before. right. When you look at the passes, he's had to defense. His numbers are way down this year. Second down and 10. A 
bit of a high snap, and again the stunt by the defensive line. Cunningham pulls up, lets it go deep for Carter. Zone coverage, terrific play by Manny Hendricks. The one-time basketball player from Utah had excellent coverage on Chris Carter. He recognized the fast break coming, and he stayed with it all the way down the field. Cunningham goes straight down the field to Chris Carter, puts it up, so gets some air underneath it. Carter now, watch him reach out, try to make the reception, but Hendricks comes over and puts that hand up there just to block his vision. That's all you got to do at that last second. And here's the last second of it again. Now watch, Hendricks' hand comes up and blocks Carter's vision right there. Beautiful play by Manny Hendricks. Randy White comes into the lineup now. Manny Hendricks drifts back. Nickel defense, third and 10. 8.42 to go. Cowboys up 23 to 10. They led at one point, 20 to nothing. And again, no blitz. Cunningham, nobody open. Scrambles, has room. A lot of room. And there will be no penalty this time as Bill Bates allows Randall Cunningham to scoot out of bounds after a 15-yard gain on third and 10. It's just as effective as a pass downfield when your quarterback's able to get out and move like that. And Randall Cunningham recognizes that's a big part of his offensive scheme, but yet still he's got to be judicious when he uses it. Philadelphia's last four possessions, three plays and a punt each time until now. And keep in mind, this drive started at the one-yard line. Again, they were put in a hold by the great play by Ron Francis is downing the ball on the goal line. Now they've been able to get out of there. 8.33 remaining in the ball game. Eagles trail 23-10 with a first down. Cunningham left side. Garrity made the catch. And he makes the grab at the 37-yard line. Robert Williams defending. Greg Garrity's one of those receivers that makes all the defenders mad because they say, he's not running that fast, but he's still making the receptions. Eagles are going without the huddle. Fighting the clock and trying to conserve time. 8-10 to go. They trail by 13 points. Left side again. Behind Garrity, he can't hang on. Greg Garrity is the answer to a terrific trivia question. Cowboy fans know the answer to another trivia question. Who caught Roger Staubach's last pass? The answer was Herb Scott, the offensive lineman. Who caught Terry Bradshaw's last pass? Number 86, Greg Garrity. He, by the way, he went to high school with my wife, so he's a member of the family in a way, in a manner of speaking. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Third and three. I know Bradshaw didn't go to high school with your wife. Well, he's older than that. I promised him I would cover it a little bit today. Cunningham back across the middle. It's caught by Tony. First down at the 27. What a drive by the Eagles with 7.50 to go in the game. They really got back on that emotional roller coaster now. They're taking it on the upswing. And what this does now is it sets the Dallas' defense. You guys have been out there on that field a long time. Aren't you getting a little tired? And again, they go without the clock. And again, no blitz. And Cunningham wings it, rolls out, pulls up, and is in trouble. Finally dropped for a sack. It'll officially be called a sack at the 27 8 yard line. Danny Noonan got him. Well, he looks like, uh, you know, the Houdini of quarterbacks. Oh. He's back there. He's trapped. He moves out. He fakes people out. He gets back to the line of scrimmage or almost does. It's just unbelievable what he can do in that pocket. Again, the no-huddle offense. Looks like Sam White's team. Deep right side. Incomplete. Michael Downs pulled up lane as he went over to try and cover Chris Carter. And Downs is limping as he reaches the 10-yard line. I remember he had that full groin before, and I'm sure that that's probably what's bothering him again. So he went up to jump for that ball. Downs is looking at the bench, might be asking for help. And he's not getting any so far. Billy Owens is ready to come in. And there's Downs, who had a full groin and uh, almost didn't play last week. Now Owens comes in, and Downs will leave. As you can believe, Randall Cunningham was looking over there and going, hey, this might be an opportunity. He might still be looking there. He's looking at a 10th round draft choice, a rookie, Billy Owens. Third and 11. Across the middle, fires, caught, first down. At the seven yard line, first and goal. A gain of 20 on third and 12. Well, this is again, we talked about that emotional level and where it's at. Now the Philadelphia Eagles are pumped up. They got an opportunity to go in and change the complexion of this game now. Watch. 
right here. Randall Cunningham fires it into Keith Byers. Byers thought that he wasn't touched there on the play, but clearly he was because he gets up and takes off to the end zone. But he made a beautiful ground-level reception. Turned Ron Francis around on that play. Shotgun on first and goal for the seventh. Six and a half to go in the game. Again, no blitz. Cunningham fires deep in the end zone. Incomplete. Carter goes up, and it's knocked away by Hendricks. You know, Chris Carter's been involved with a lot of passes today that have just been out of his reach. And you got to believe that sooner or later he's going to get one and he's going to score on you. But they're working on that corner over there because they believe that Chris Carter is one of those guys that when he gets in the end zone, he's very effective for you. How do you explain this game? The three possessions prior to this one, Philadelphia had three plays in a punt. Stautner urging his team on. The defensive coordinator. Now it's second and goal from the seventh. They'll try to draw up the middle. Anthony Tony. second effort on the part of Anthony Tony. He just, you know, when, when a running back gets down here, you have to have the kind of guy that can smell the end zone, really has that second drive and desire to get in there. And that's what Tony displayed on that play. Zendejas for the very important extra point. Good. 99 yards in 14 plays, and they used only Three minutes and four seconds. Good, solid draw blocking up front. Tony just punishes the guys on the defensive line and does the rest on second effort. Takes it in the end zone for six points. Eagles are back. They trail by six. Anthony Tony caps a 99-yard drive with a seven-yard run on the draw play. And the Philadelphia Eagles stymied for the entire second half now gotten right back in this, and they trail by only six. Luis Zendejas will kick it deep. Burbage and Martin wait for it. And they won't get it. As it goes out of bounds at the 10th. Cowboys to take it on the 35. By the kickers, by rule, the ball is placed on the 35-yard line. Now, tiny little things, Dan, that happen in football games that sometimes get forgotten. Go back to the first half. The Cowboys, out of timeouts, put together a terrific drive after Philadelphia had scored, but they had no timeouts, couldn't stop the clock, and Pelour, with the clock running down, tried to stop the clock and did not do so at the 12-yard line. Had he been able to get rid of the ball one second earlier, Ruzek might have had a field goal attempt from in short. Or even taking the penalty by just snapping the ball and going with it without waiting for his lineman to get down. First and ten. Eagle crowd back in it. 6-18 remaining. And Pelour will throw. Left side. Herschel Walker flag down. Cowboys holding. Again. It's Timmy Newsom who made the catch. Holding Dallas. They are operating with a couple of backup guards in there. I don't know if it was one of the guards or not. Penalty. Offense, number 63, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. It was. That's Glenn Titanser who replaced Nate Newton. Newton on the bench with an injury. Now, what you do if you're the Eagles' defensive line, you start running stunts because you recognize that the people in the middle are not as familiar with one another and switching off like you'd like them to have. So you start running stunts with your inside defensive tackles and sending those linebackers on blitzes cause confusion, and then you get some more sacks. 5.58 to go. Six-point Dallas lead. Play fake by Pelour. He has to scramble. And he's down at the 34-yard line. He gets nine of the ten back. He didn't waste any time pulling it in. He sure didn't. Uh, he didn't get any twist up front from the defensive line. What he got was a straight hard bull rush by all four of them. He recognized he had an opportunity because he saw an alley over on the left side, and he took advantage of it to gain about nine yards on the play. Second down, 11. 5.20 to go in the ball game. Watch and see if the Eagles stunt defensively. This time they don't. They blitz. Pelour reads it, goes left side. 
And the catch is made by Doug Cosby, the tight end, short of the first down at the 41-yard line. A delay strong safety blitz in there, and what happens is when they delay, Ballure recognized it right away and dumped the football off, thrown to a spot. Was able to take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Third and four. Prevent defense in for the Eagles. Terry Hogue and William Frizzell come in. Kevin Sweeney sends in the signal. Wydell is out. You saw him. Third and four. Dallas 5:09 to go. I thought I saw Kevin Sweeney saying this is going to be a screen. Let's see if that's the case. Watch for Walker. He's caught four today. He's to the right side. Kelvin Martin in motion. Flag is down. Delay of game. Again. Boy, you know what? Now you think about the other thing, too. The Cowboys have burned two timeouts already, call, calling timeouts because they, they were running out of time on the 32nd clock. So again, if this thing comes down to the wire, another opportunity lost because you had to call timeouts because of your formations and complications offensively. Delay. Offense, number 16, five-yard penalty, repeat the down, third down. Now instead of a third and four, call it a third and nine. And the ball moves back to the 36. 507 remaining in the ball game. Again, the Eagles with the prevent defense. Giants come back and nip Atlanta by the same score we have here. Well, we have 23-17 here. Blitz. Pelour up, goes deep left side. Man open, caught. First down, Dallas. Ray Alexander who has really shined in the last three weeks in the absence of Kelvin Edwards and Michael Irvin. And again, the guy that they're working on is Eric Allen, number 21, the young rookie at the cornerback position. But he's playing about as well as you can without you know, getting too close on the coverage and picking up the penalty. He's a young guy, and he's learning out there. Every play, he's learning. But, hey, you know what? Sometimes you believe in a guy like that. You come back the next year or even sometimes the next game, and the guy starts making picks for you. I'm going to make a guess, Dan, because we don't have it up in a minute, but I think they've thrown at Eric Allen 13 or 14 times today. At least. First and 10, huge game by the Cowboys. They buy more time on the clock. Walker up the middle on the draw. Flag down again in the offensive backfield. Might be a holding call. Yeah, but remember, the Cowboys have been able to be effective in this drive even with penalties. Holding Dallas. Holding. Offense, number 63, takedown. 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. That's the second in this drive on Glenn Titanson. Yeah, but you have to wonder, did he have to say takedown? Could he just say holding? Uh, 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 Glenn's going, hey, give me a break out here. Get a chance to play. Leave me alone. Don't watch me. Watch somebody else. Titans are playing in place of the injured Nate Newton, who's out with a, a neck injury, a sprained neck. Crawford Kerr has come back in the lineup now, and Titans is being replaced. and crowd is calling for Philadelphia defense. Bob White moves at left guard, number 65. Play fake. Ballure settles for the alternate receiver, and he throws it over the head of Herschel Walker. It'll be second and 20. 429 to go in the game. The one thing that impresses you is that Steve Pelour has been getting a lot of time to throw the football now with this great defensive line that the Philadelphia Eagles have and that really the Dallas Cowboys working with a patchwork offensive line. Steve pelour has got time to sit back there and tip tap. Looks like he's in one of those old Fred Astaire shows and then he finally throws the football. Second and 20, Dallas. They led 20-0 early in the second quarter. Eagles came back to make it 20-7. to it's now 23-17. Pelour, 308 yards and one touchdown. He's been intercepted once. The Cowboys have been called for holding five times. Pelour, Cosby. He is down at the 47-yard line. That will leave a third and about 10. William Frizzell makes the tackle here, and the clock keeps winding down. Well, the interesting thing, too, is the Dallas offense is being fairly patient now. Uh, there you expect them maybe to try to go for the whole thing and get the first down, but they say, hey, we'll take a little bit now and a little bit later. Now it's third down and about nine. Okay, now you go back again to something that works. Maybe you tight end, maybe Herschel Walker out of the backfield. Third and nine. 3.50 to go in the game. 
Cowboys up 23-17. Shotgun. Stunts by the defensive line. Pelour drills it for Martin. Kelvin Martin first down at the 30. A 16-yard gain. And Kelvin Martin looks like he may have pulled a hamstring. I saw him grabbing it, and it looks like he's going to head out of the ball game because of that. Now, Pelour's, Steve pelour has got plenty of time to look around, look downfield, and get this ball into Martin. Now he looks over to the left. Looks the defenders off and now comes back to the right to Martin. He makes a great reception on Roy L. Young there. And then there, that right just before he went down is when he looked like he pulled that hamstring. Eight catches for Kelvin Martin for 97 yards. Kelvin Edwards in the ball game. He's lined up wide to the left. Everett Gay is wide right. Walker for just a couple down to the 29. That is the 25th carry for Herschel today. And I tell you what they've been able to do, uh, that is the Dallas offense, is they've been able to burn up that clock. And they have to now because they don't have any time out. They have one time out left, I believe, uh, in the ball game. So they've got to burn the clock up now. And then twice on this drive, the Cowboys have overcome first and 20. Twice they've overcome holding calls. Timeout. And now the second. Eagles. Your second timeout. Have called timeout. That is their second. They have one left. Both teams with one timeout left. No groin pull for Kelvin Martin. The report from the bench is a cramp in his leg. And the Eagles call timeout. That's Jim Erkenbeck, the offensive line coach. <laughs> what a what a what an interesting fourth quarter. A 99-yard drive by the Eagles. And then the Cowboys come back on the ropes and they overcome two first and 20s and, and that's really that extra effort that you look for you know when you get in the hole you're able to come back out of it now Erkenbeck's telling his offensive lineman hey look now they may try to run some games on you and run some blitzes be prepared for all of that and just remember the most important thing is don't let anybody get a cheap play on you that is escape without you touching them getting to your quarterback Tom Rafferty and Kevin Gogan there's the old and the new of the Cowboy offense what a what a continuum at center for the Dallas Cowboys Starting back with Dave Manders, who was the center for so many years, then John Fitzgerald, and now Tom Rafferty in his 13th year. And Raff said this week, he's probably going to come back and try it again. <laughs> Hadn't had enough pounding yet. <laughs> Cunningham looks on, wanting one more shot. And two and a half minutes remaining in this game. Edwards goes to the left side. Everett Gay is wide right. Newsom and Walker in the backfield. Second down and nine. Play fake. Hot receiver left side, Tim Newsom, and Andre Waters has him and knocks him out of bounds to conserve the clock. He's out two yards short of the first down. Ballora had to do a pretty good job of getting rid of the ball. Yeah, he sure did. And now, what you think about what he's doing, hey, look, you know, he's working that clock down, working him downfield, and at worst, uh, just as long as you don't give the ball away down here, you come out at worst with a field goal. Cowboys lead it. As Pelour has had 342 yards, one touchdown, and one interception today. Well, finally, offensively, he's put together the numbers and the score on the, on the, on the board, and that's the important thing. And he's been able to be effective uh, scoring points for the Cowboys. Third and three, Dallas. Play fake. Bootleg pulls up and just throws it away. A flag is down. Clyde Simmons roughing the passer. intentional grounding is that the call well, there was no receiver around the football that may be the call Ballor went down under Simmons here's Dick Antak intentional yep. grounding on the offense number 16 it is a loss of down at the spot first down the biggest problem Steve Ballor has had this year has been a series of mental mistakes late in ball games Pass is intercepted in Pittsburgh. Pass intercepted in the New York game. And now, intentional grounding and loss of down. And will they bring Ruzek out? No, they will not, because it would be a 52-yard field goal. And they're not going to try it. No. Landry's going to go with his defense and have Saxon try and pooch kick it inside the 10-yard line. This would have been a 52-yard field goal, so the Eagles will get it back. 
with two minutes to go. Fourth and 15. And the Cowboys will take a deliberate delay of game call to allow Saxon five more yards. Well, what they try to do is when you saw them with that shifting on the uh, on the, uh, the line, they're trying to draw Philadelphia off sides. That doesn't work. So, okay, we'll take the five-yard penalty. That gives Saxon an opportunity to, to kick it a little bit further and maybe pooch it in like you said. Just put together a 99-yard drive that took only 307, 304 rather, and they will get it back, barring a turnover. Konechny waits for it at the 10. Taken by Konechny at the 10, and dragged down from behind the 16-yard line. So with 2.11 to go in the ballgame, Garth Jacks makes the tackle. Randall Cunningham leads the Eagles out. They need a touchdown and an extra point to get the lead for the first time today. And you can believe when you're inside these huddles now, you know that this is it. You line up and you say, hey, look, this is a real special feeling one time or another during a football game. This is when you feel it because you say, hey, now we can do it offensively or defensively. You're saying, hey, look, we stop them here. We go home. Happy Cowboys. The Eagles need 85 yards. First and 10 from the shotgun. Cunningham goes right for Carter incomplete. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. like it might be against Philadelphia. And they round up the usual suspects. <laughs> Dallas with the option. Do they want the second down? Take the play? I think they want to push Philadelphia back to that goal mm -hmm. line if they possibly can. There's Ted Plum, the offensive coordinator, looking on. Offense, number 73, penalized half the distance to the goal line. That is Ron Heller, the right tackle. And the ball back to the seven-yard line. Still time for at least one more play before the two-minute warning. Garrity comes left. Chris Carter goes right. And Jackson is in the slot to the right-hand side. Prevent defense in for Dallas. Three-man rush. Cunningham and Anthony Tony. And he is going to be dragged down as he gets to the 16-yard line, back near the original line of scrimmage. That will be the final play before the two-minute warning. Eagles have a second down and nine at the two-minute spot, and they've got one timeout left. 23-17, Dallas, 159 to go. Eagles with a second down and eight, and one timeout left. Tom Landry's team trying to go three and five and avoid the worst start in 25 years for the Cowboys. Buddy Ryan's team trying to stay one game back of the division leaders and to defeat Dallas for the second time in succession for the first time in 21 years. Second and eight. Cunningham, 20 of 40 for 229. Right side again. Keith Jackson drops it. And Everson Wall is covering Jackson. It'll be third and eight. Randall Cunningham wanting his uh, tight end Jimmy Giles he was in the line. calling for Giles and that's what he's getting Jimmy Giles is coming into the football game he knows that Jimmy Giles is a money type receiver experienced guy this kind of situation you want your older fellows in the game and that's what he got but surprisingly I thought and, and Jackson is out Jackson comes out Giles is in third and eight Eagles four man rush Cunningham pulls up and drills it knocked away Manny Hendricks and there are no flags tell you what the, the Dallas secondary has been on Chris Carter today he has not gotten a break every time they try to go to him somebody is on him batting away the ball getting in his vision he has just had a bad day against Dallas he has not been able to catch a pass effectively and, and get in there when he really wants it fourth and eight and the Eagles will go for it he's got one pass for 12 yards today they've thrown at least 10 his way Garrity comes left Carter right Fourth and eight, Philadelphia. Right side, first down, Eagles. 
Eagles. At the 26, Jimmy Giles comes in and makes the grab. Stop pattern. He gets the first down, gets the ball, and goes down to the ground. Understands what the two-minute drill is all about. He's the man that Cunningham wanted in the lineup, and Grandel drops back and intentionally stops the clock with 90 seconds to go. Isn't that fascinating? Looks at the bench and I want Giles in here. He comes in, doesn't use him on the third down play, but on fourth down, boom. He goes to the guy that he knows is a go-to guy, tough situation. Hey, give me a guy in here that really understands what this deal is all about and how to get open. That's the key. Get the escape off the line of scrimmage and get open. Garrity comes left. Bernie Stockner is the man who calls the defensive signals. Second down and 10, Philadelphia. 1.30 remaining in the ballgame. The Eagles still have a timeout left. Cunningham deep left side. Garrity, does he keep possession? I think he did. Yes! What a catch by the possession receiver, Greg Garrity. And he is down on the, on the turf. And this is a call. It's got to be a call timeout in the final two minutes. An injury in the final two minutes to Greg Garrity. Well, I tell you what, on the crossing pattern, Randall Cunningham has all kinds of time. No pressure. Sits back and finds Garrity on the break. Now, this ball is delivered beautifully, and Garrity makes a great catch on the play. He's airborne when he makes it, and he comes down on that hard astroturf on his knee. Caught it right in front of Robert Williams, the second-year man, and Greg Garrity still not up. So the Eagles drive 99 yards, time before this one, and now they overcome a fourth and eight and they've got the ball at their own 48-yard line. No timeouts left. And these guys, the Eagles, don't allow you to go to sleep at the switch. They keep you busy. If in the back of your mind you're thinking turnover for Dallas, the Cowboys in the fourth quarter through seven games have obtained just one takeaway in the fourth quarter. That was a fumble recovery. They have yet to intercept a pass in the fourth quarter this year. And when you look at turnovers in general, that's been the thing that they've had, you know, been very desirous of getting this season, but it's really avoided. And as we said earlier, Ernie Stockton said, hey, look, you know, the ball's just not bouncing our way for some reason or another. Now, if you come up with a turnover here in this situation, this is a big play that closes down the game for you. And I'm sure that's what Tom Landry's thinking. Hey, look, somebody just stop and get the turnover, whatever it is, fumble, you know, interception, whatever you can do. This one's not over, but we've got an interesting night coming up for you tonight on CBS. We begin with 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the highly acclaimed wrap-up of the CBS Sunday movie Part 2, Jack the Ripper, starting Michael Caine, Jane Seymour, and Armand Asante. That's tonight. Right now, first and ten Eagles, and they've got the ball at their own 47-yard line. Cunningham dances left, pulls up, and will run out of bounds at the Cowboy 47-yard line. Stopping the clock with still 69 seconds left. He's been extremely good. Randall Cunningham has it using the clock and taking advantage of opportunities there. You know, he got as much as he could out of the play, and then he headed out of bounds to save his clock. Now, the thing that that causes is now that puts those defensive backs in a sweat because they say, hey, look, if I give good coverage downfield, he can still run for the first down, and if you don't watch out, he'll take it the distance on you. This drive started at the 15. The Eagles overcame a fourth and eight. They've got a second down and five right now at the Cowboys, 48-yard line. Cunningham looks deep and fires deep. Ron Johnson at the 28-yard line. He just came in for the injured Greg Garrity. 20-yard gain. Randy White hurries on the field. And the clock is stopped with 49 seconds to go. Watch the pass to Ron Johnson, number 85. Now he's working against Williams here. He escapes him. Now he's released downfield. And there you see, I believe that's Francis playing him in the middle in this a zone. And Billy Bates has to come up and make the stop. Nobody really settled on him as a receiver. From the 29, second and 10. 49 seconds to go. Starts by the defensive line. Cutting hand three for Johnson. Hold it low. Third and 10. Mm. 
Hey, this sellout crowd got what their money's worth today out of the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys, that's for sure. This has been when it swung back and forth emotionally as well as with the, when you think about really what everybody's been doing and how effective they've been from quarter to quarter. It's kind of gone back and forth. And now uh, Philadelphia's been able to go on a nice sustained drive here. And if they get this touchdown. Jackson stays on the bench. Giles still in the tight end. He's flipped to the right. Third and ten. Cunningham right side. Tipped and incomplete. It was double coverage over there with both Burton and Downs on Jimmy Giles. And apparently Michael Downs reached in. He's number 26. Watch him right down at the bottom of your screen. He comes in, slaps the ball away, but really he wasn't the guy that was on him. I don't know where that call came from. If there was a call, it had to be Everson Walls, but that's a big hit. First down, Cunningham, right corner for Giles, incomplete. 34 seconds left. You go back at that if they call that on downs and that was the number that was announced yeah i think the, he, the official just made a mistake he really wanted to call it on uh, on everson wall just got the numbers mixed up ball at the 20 second and 10 34 seconds remaining giles is out keith jackson comes back in no timeouts left for the eagles 34 seconds remaining they need a touchdown and an extra point for the win changing the play. Now Fires comes into the backfield. He's looking at that blitz right up the middle. It's off. Half roll right side. Tony gets out of bounds. Kills the clock at the 15-yard line. 30 seconds to go. Tackle made by Ron Burton. Now one of the things you... Let's look for this with the Eagles. They spread out the defense of Dallas and maybe put Fires up in that slot and try to run him towards the sideline, flooding the other area of the field. Let's see if they do that they run out, they spread him out wide. If they do, you know what the play is. All right, Byers comes to the left side with Ron Johnson. Jackson and Carter go right, third and five. Cowboys threaten the blitz. They're not blitzing. Cunningham, left side, Johnson overthrown. Fourth down. This is it. It all comes down to money now. Garrity hobbles back into the lineup for the Eagles. He made a huge catch. You're looking at Ernie Stautner. Byers comes out. The Cowboys take Randy White and Danny Noonan out of the lineup. And here comes Philadelphia, trailing by six. Fourth and five from the 15. Cunningham left side, man open. Clock shows 17 seconds and running. First and goal from the two. Now you just stop the clock. You throw the ball out of bounds so you can run the ball. Five is down. Clock is stopped with eight seconds to go.
Now you can take your time if you're on the defensive side of the ball getting back across the line of scrimmage, but you got to make sure that you get back over there before the ball snap. First and goal from the eight. But from the two, eight seconds to go. They possibly have time for two plays. Timeout, Dallas. That's their last. Timeout, Dallas. Their third timeout. Now, do you defend run or pass? I think you defend pass down here because what Philadelphia likes to do down here is, like we said, run that little flood pattern and then come back to the running back up underneath. It's something that, uh, you know, you watch their film and whatnot, you see what they do down on that goal line. Perfect opportunity for Randall Cunningham to take advantage of that here, particularly if you can break him out and get him open late. Twice in this drive, the Eagles have overcome fourth down. A fourth and eight and a fourth and five. Now they've got time for at least one, possibly two more plays. Here's that play uh, to Greg Garrity. See Randall Cunningham, he drops back, finds Garrity. Garrity makes a great reception on the play. Big play there, money man. Back to live action, eight seconds to go. Shotgun. Cunningham with a half roll, lobs it, caught. at the Cowboy 20. And Anthony Tony gets the touchdown with four seconds to go. Zendayas for the extra point. And the Philadelphia Eagles have come of age in this football game. Randall Cunningham has really come of age in this football game, proving to himself and everyone else that they're ready to go up to the next level in the National Football League. Now, just in the back of your minds, recall the sequence of plays at the end of the first half when the Cowboys had the ball at the Eagle 12-yard line could not stop the clock to get Ruzek on for a field goal. How big those little things become. Four seconds to go. Mark Higgs is one of those deep to return the kick. This is Bob White with the ball, and the game is over. Sports coverage of the NFL has been a presentation of CBS Sports. 
back with the NFL Today postgame show after these messages.